Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to CGL, where we have a grand finals for the EU Diamond tier here right now. It's XQC7 against the Cabarets here. It's going to be a great one. I am Dextron, joined by Shadow Fang to their Shadow. How are you doing tonight? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Honestly, looking forward to a Diamond tier series. This is a tier that, like, I play in, at least on the NA side, so I should be fairly familiar with, uh, you know, what's going on here. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one here tonight, but why don't we kind of look at the overall bracket here? Why don't we see the team's journeys to get here at the moment? As you can see, XQC7s here, able to run their way through that upper bracket, win that winner's final, secure them a spot in the grand finals. The Cabarets, on the other hand, got knocked down to the loser's brackets by XQC7s. They're in that first round. It went to five maps, but ever since then, the Cabarets have only dropped one map. Yeah, so with it being a five mapper in the first round, I see no reason why it wouldn't be a close series again here up top. Let's see if maybe the Cabarets were able to learn something from that loss. Like you said, they haven't really, they've only dropped one map in the two matches they've played since then. Maybe they've learned something from that loss and they're going to be able to uh, recover and turn that around from last time. Yeah, dropping bracket right now. But, you know, while we talk about the rest of... <laughs> While we talk about the rest of everything that's going on here tonight, why don't we introduce you to the teams? Uh, first, with XQC Sevens here, you have your DPS line of Soft, uh, Soft Low there, and Shidori Ballin being your tank, and Klein Held and DPS Moira being your support lines here for XQC Sevens. Yeah, I mean, with a name like DPS Moira, I'm really, really hoping that we get to see some flank Moira shenanigans. You know, it's always really fun to see Moira's fade into the back line, toss that damage orb and pop a coalescence in a pincer movement with their team. But now let's see what we have for the Cabarets lineup. All right, we're going to be looking at uh, Verted on the tank, Saren and Faptiste main on the support line, and then Zoro and Mute for the DPS and again, if you're going to have a name like Baptiste Main, you you should. I, I expect to see some Baptiste played here. You know, it's also EU. We know how much EU loves to play their Reinhardt compositions. You know, are they going to pull the Reinhardt out or are they going to go with the more uh, meta Ramatra sort of variation on that? Yeah, you're absolutely right there with what we could see out, out from the, both these teams here tonight. But we do know what our first map of the night is going to be here in these grand finals. We're going to be heading to Lijiang Tower. Now, Shadow, 
I talk about Liu Tower a lot as just a good starting map for any mm -hmm. series, in my opinion. You can play a lot of different comps, and you can find a lot of success mm -hmm. with those different comps. Yeah, especially on a map like Control Center, you still see Reinhardt played at the highest level. Reinhardt will go usually into a Ramatra, but you still can see it. So I wouldn't be surprised to see like a, a Reinhardt if we go to Control Center. And for the other two maps, I would honestly expect to see more potentially dive compositions or also just them feeding into that Ramatra. You know, we, like I said, we know how much EU loves their brawl. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. Um, but, you know, we talk about seeing uh, brawls and dive comps here. I've actually seen the ball come out on Li Zhong Tower here recently to find a very great success uh, so far. Here. So whenever the teams get in lobby here, it's going to be really interesting to see what they come out with. Yeah, most definitely. So, all right, looking like this is going to be our first map here. There are, like I said, a wide variety of options we could have going out here. This is one where I could see that Wrecking Ball come out, like you said. The actual point itself is just so wide open. You have several points to grapple from. You could even boot people off the map through those side doors if you're your Wrecking Ball player. So, really, we'll just we'll see if they're going to troll us or not in about two seconds. Well, coming out, XQC coming with the ball comp. At least Ballin's teasing us with the ball. Uh, and the Cabarets, a D.Va pick. Yeah, that's typically going to be the duel if one team does not want to take the ball v. ball. Diva seems to be one of the better counters to that. And perhaps the Cabarets are ready for this Farah pick as well, which is also why you're going to see the Cassidy and the Diva. Yeah, but countdown is underway. Gates are open. The EU Diamond Grand Finals are now began here. You see Ballin immediately just rolling through the entry here to the mid main part of this map right now. And they're taking a lot of space, but the Cabaret's actually playing it a little bit slow here. You see Sidori trying to get in a good position to hack someone there on the Cabaret's. But right now, it seems like each team kind of trying to feel the other team out here. Yeah, soft low just getting plenty of poke damage in. I mean, look at this ult charge already coming out from them. And you really just want to see somebody take control of this point now. Yeah, fight here on point. The Cabaret's currently in the lead of it right now, but you hear the hack coming out there onto the Professor. Whoever verted, able to find Ballin there. So that will give the first point over to the Cabaret's, but they're trying to find some more kills here. Soft low though, able to find Mute. Yeah, that's a big one. That's their main counter on the enemy team. Well, I suppose you have the Diva as well. And Baptiste main goes down too. Unfortunate kind of fall there for the Cabarets here, but they're trying to get back in. Ball able to find the other support there of Taiga. Whoever saw Flow there without that mercy support immediately falls there for, to Varted. Uh, but now the XQC here trying to get control of the point. They're going to be able to, and they also get soft flow back up. Yeah, big res coming out. That's going to be the first ult on the board for XQC7. So you want to see soft flow getting this big poke damage in early so they can get it off before Cabarets have a chance to build ults. Yeah, but ooh, a nice couple shots coming out there from Newt, um, from Newt, almost able to take down Kleinheld there. However, they're able to take out Softlow and send. There's no rest to get them back in. This one, Bomb coming out from Professor on point will not be able to find anyone. And Sidori able to find Professor as they get back in. Before they get back to the round, Ballin though falls. Mute though with this Nano, able to find DPS Mario. Shidori also falls for XQC and Kleinheld just decides to jump off the map to regroup with their team. Yeah, and if you're the side of XQC7, you use no ults, and you got two ults out of Cabarets. What you're going to want to watch for, though, for the side of XQC7s is that EMP. The EMP is the big, just really fight-ending ultimate, and uh, Softlow has to get a big barrage here. Absolutely right here, but you start to see XQC7 come back in there. Look for the EMP it finds four. That's a great opener here for XQC7. Here comes the barrage from Softlow. It only is able to find Farty, but they have no EMP now in their disposal. DPS Moira finds one. Make it two. Make it three for the DPS Moira. And Professor just going to fly themselves off the edge of the map as XQC7 retake the point. And a minor thing as well. Softlow actually gets all of that kill credit. So you see they're already back up to 25% on that barrage. Play coming out from them here, but now the Cabaret's coming back in with a, a lot of ultimates of their own. Yeah, yeah, honestly, Verted, Verted needs to be big time with this EMP. That We saw how big it was from Shidori in the last fight. 
And you see Mute here, and basically the entirety of the Cabarets here trying to get rid of Shidori, but Shidori able to escape with their lives, get that health back. You hear them hacking it back up. Mute almost getting taken out here. This high noon is going to be a lot of value for them here, but Ballin going to pop that minefield on the Cabarets before they get in to the point here, so buying a lot of time. EMP comes out from Varded, only finds Shidori as Varded does find DPS more, though here comes the damage matrix, though, from Faptiz. However, not necessarily finding a lot at the moment. Varded doing enough here on the point to get some percentage captured, but right now you see XQC all coming back to it. Mute, though, able to find Shidori here. High Noon coming out from Mute here, trying to find anyone, not going to be able to find anyone, but the pressure from that High Noon, able to flip the point. Yeah, and the Nano comes out onto Mute as well there. That's a lot of ults burnt for the Cabarets, but they were able to take point back, so you could say it was a worthwhile trade, and down goes Kleinheld. Yeah, Mute been an absolute sure shot so far this round right now. Uh, again, uh, they have now retaken the lead here, but the ultimate's now in the hands of XQC here. Soft low, able to find Verde. That's a huge pick for them. Professor trying to get the ball off the map, but instead they just push themselves off the map. Soft low does find one with their barrage, and the kill is just going their way as well. The point will eventually flip back over to them here. Yeah, that was pretty tragic for Professor. Like, I've, I've done that before myself. You think you're going to get that little knock onto the ball, and then you don't, and it throws you off so hard. Shidori does, does have this EMP, though. This is going to be big time for the last fight here. Yeah, it could be last fight and you here as we're essentially in that territory. Ballin, though, able to find Farted out early. Professor's bomb now. The only thing the car... The car... Wow, well, I can't remember. Right uh, have at the moment, but it has to be huge for them. They're trying to get the hack on them. Shidori still does have this EMP or ball. Ball and balls early. Tiger though immediately gets traded out after that here. DPS Moira doing their namesake there, picking up a couple kills. The high noon coming out, not gonna be able to find anyone. They do reach take point here. EMP coming out there. So does the bomb. Mute and Professor already out. Farted back on the trace now. Try and do their best to keep this point alive and in their control. The hack coming out on them. Three, four, five members of XQC7 there will be able to flip the point back in their favor. Uh, there is a touch coming in, though. Oh. Kanga immediately falls. Here comes the damage matrix from Fappenstein here. Mute does fall. Uh, actually does find DPS more there. And now you're starting to see some more members of, of uh, Karabit come back here. Tadori does find Professor there right now. You see them. Softball here trying to get rid of Fappenstein. But actually, no, it's going to be the other way around. They find them. Mute does find Tadori Ballin, though. Does find Fappenstein main right there. And we're seeing some reds. However, we see some kills coming out here. We're going to see a point flip. Uh, and that is insane. You can attribute that all to Taiga's touch on that Lucio. That last second touch. It did not look like it was going to be major, but it was fight turning. Just getting that touch was enough to allow Mute to come back and pop off and Varded to swap that Tracer, come back and get kills as well. Yeah, and you got to give... You gotta give that team a lot of credit there because I essentially thought that that round was gonna end there with XQC uh, cleaning up those couple kills there, but we just saw mm -hmm. a couple great individual plays come out from everyone there on the Cabaret side that just flipped that point and flipped the point back in their control and overall ended up winning them the point. Yeah, that was that was a kind of a crazy exchange to witness there. I did I did not think Cabaret's were gonna turn that around. But it looks like XQC 7s are going to stick onto the same composition as well as Cabaret's. Well, no, Varded has swapped the Sombra to the Tracer now. Yeah, they did that towards the end of last round, but I thought it was mostly for a touch. However, it looks like they're going to stick with it this round here at the moment. Maybe they didn't find as much value as they truly wanted to get last time with that uh, Sombra here. But they're immediately hacked here as, you know, they, I imagine the hack was trying to go for Professor, but you always take the opportunity to hack someone. Absolutely. Uh, Softlow is just getting so much poke damage and look at this, already 50% on this barrage. Yeah, and you know, just with the spacing that the Cabarets have right now, it's allowing uh, Softlow to get that much damage and they're playing very far behind right now and Softlow can just easily stand far back just raining in some rocket shots there as you see them take care of Mute here. Still the point is not being capped yet, DPS more able to find Tiger there, Baptiste main goes down as well and XQC7 should be able to cap the point first again. And Softlow has Barrage already. I have a hard time believing they're going to be ready for that, the side of Cabarets. So you really you just want to force out Professor's de defense matrix as much as you possibly can to give Softlow a good opportunity. Nice shot. Yeah, a nice shot by Mute. Unfortunate there for the XQC team. You did not want to see Shidori fall that early. But like I said, this Barrage is still incoming, and that's the big ultimate here. Got nano boost for the side of Cabarets. 
Nano, here comes the Mirage. It finds one. It finds two. They won't be able to eat up much of that, but they still do. A they're still able to flip the point here. Mute though finds one. They find two. Make it three with the magnetic grenade. Ballin though gonna be able to trade out Mute there. However, Cabarets do have control of the point here, but it's just Ballin and Klein health. Yeah, that Wrecking Ball does have a lot of health to survive on, though, so they are going to be able to regroup. And I expect DPS Moira to have a big Coalescence again. They've been popping off with this Coalescence, getting two or three kills every time they use it. Here comes the Coalescence from DPS Moira. Will they be able to find some kills with it this time like they have in the past? They're able to read it the point off of it. So a lot of good pressure coming out there. Ballin does also invest the mines into that little condensed walkway right there to make sure the cabaret do not walk through it as Soflo finds Varded there. Sidora getting the hack there. They do have their EMP ready. So they have a lot of they have a lot of ultimates here that they can keep and use to just win team fight after team fight here as they have already pretty much won this one. Yeah just a honestly a really nice pile driver and just an unintentional body block there from Ballin there at the end. Just gives Softlow a nice corridor to shoot into, making it really easy for them to build ult charge. 80% already. And Shidori, again, falling way before a team fight even starts there. Last time that happened, it led to a, a professor? Uh, they're probably just trying to get their suit back. You might be right there, but right now the Cabarets, you know, last time that Shidori fell early in a fight, they were able to flip the point. Shidori does have that EMP ready. High new coming out here from you. They're able to find Shidori, so no EMP again! for XQC right now, and Mute absolutely just turning it on right now, finds two Baptiste Man does find the DPS Moira, and this in my opinion should be a point flip right now, but we see Ballin trying to survive as long as they can on that point, but it'll probably only get them about 95%. Uh, and I mean, you gotta be happy with that if you're the side of XQC 7s, you didn't have to burn any of your ultimates, and you still have that EMP available that we've been talking about, so it could be really, really big time. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. Professor and Faptisman do have their ultimates ready to go here. Professor, I imagine, is going to kind of save that ultimate for a remech opportunity right here. Shidori, though, looking for the hack on them. They now know they're somewhere back there. They're actually able to get on the Faptisman. That's a good target as well because of their ultimate being ready here. Now you start to see some of the of this team getting back to the point here. Softlow here trying to rain in some damage. They do have their barrage ready, and the immortality field kind of invested early here. EMP comes out, it finds three, ball and find one, the Barrage finds another right there. This is exactly what XQC wanted here. Already three members down, make it four, Bomb coming out, but they won't be able to get back in their mech, and this would be a point flip and a team kill. Yeah, it was just the going so early, they they didn't allow Faptiste main to ever pop that window, and that's what you really like to see from, an e from a team that has that EMP available. You want to go as early as you possibly can, because those two seconds could be just long enough to completely deny ultimates. Yeah, you're absolutely right, but now, with that win there by XQC, it forces us to the final point here on Lijiang Tower. We're heading to Control Center here. Now, of all the maps, I feel like this is the one that is the, probably the most brawly of the bunch here, but at the moment, we're not seeing any brawl count comps. Yeah, yeah, it's very surprising to me, honestly. Usually, this is the map where you would see a Ramatra and Varded going onto that Junkrat. That doesn't surprise me at all. Oh, no? here we go. Well, at least one team is coming out with the traditional ball comp. Ballin wants to stay on that ball here at the moment, and the rest of their team pretty much st staying held with the, the picks they've played so far this map. Ooh, and mute. Mute. Oh my goodness, mute already, too, picking up right where they left off on the last map, and Varded. Oh, the mine. The. <laughs> that trap there, able to catch Ballin, and just a great start here for the Cabarets. Yeah, Junkrat Trap, an underrated counter for the Wrecking Ball, because if you're just stuck in place, it makes it real easy for the whole, t for the whole team to shoot the ball. <laughs> Cabaret's cap point here first. Mute, basically the biggest winner in that first fight, already above 50%. The next person, the next closest person is Tiger. DPS Mora trying to get as much DPS in as they possibly can. A huge pile drive there by Ball, and we'll be able to find Tiger. A great start here for XQC ball and finds two right there. Can they make it a third? They're doing enough pressure to force everyone back from the cabaret. So this should be a point play. Ooh. Ugh. A double pile drive to end it. Oh, that's gross. 
That's gross. They're so grouped up. Bowen is just able to roll through and toss that 50 damage onto several players at the same time. And the same with the pile driver. It's just a massive amount of damage on top of the rockets coming in from Softlow. Bardid swapping over here to the soldier. I do like the swap. I feel like it does give him a little bit more playability right now. But you do see Professor trying to use that big shield right there to just keep everyone's support. However, Softlow with that shield down, able to take care of Mute there. And look at what this is doing to the Cabaret. It's kind of forcing them to fall back as Ballin just being an absolute menace to this team right now. And they're so grouped up, Ballin is consistently going in with over a thousand HP. And that's just, that's impossible to kill. Like, you just can't do anything about that Wrecking Ball. And look at all these ultimates. Five ultimates for the XQC7s here. I'm expecting to see the EMP and Barrage combo that they've been doing so often. Barter though, able to find Softlo there. That's a great opener. They're trying to deny the res. You do see Baptiste Man going over there probably to deny it. And it seems like at this point they're going to be able to. However, Valkyrie coming out here from Kleinhold. They will be able to get that res off on a Softlo. Here comes the Coalescence from DPS Mortal. Able to find Tiger. Now the Visor coming out here from Barter. Able to find one. Make it two. Make it three. Can they find the fourth one here on to Kleinheld. Kleinheld doing their best just to dance around, but the point has already been swapped and hey, just got to stand there waiting to die. Oh, that nano visor was insane from, from the side of the cabarets there. It, that's the only two ultimates you had to burn as well. So Baptiste main still has a sound barrier ready for this EMP coming in from Shidori. Again, yeah, each team does have some ultimates to play with here. Shidori, like mm -hmm. you said, has that EMP ready. Professor, though, does have the Shatter ready to go. And without, no sh without any shield here, you know, it's going to be very costly if XQC7 here decides to group up. We see the hack there on the tight. EMP comes out immediately, finds two there. Faptiz main falls right off that. And look at this, already five. It's going to be a team kill here for XQC and a point flip. That was really intelligent from Shidori. You saw that they were specifically watching Fabtiste main there and trying to catch them out with the EMP to make sure that sound barrier doesn't come through. That being said, Cabaret should be able to easily take this fight with all the ultimates they have. I'd, I'd be surprised if they don't. Yeah, and you can kind of see how XQC is playing right now. They know that they have some ultimates in their disposal, so they're trying to play very aggressive, but after they get through that choke point, you see them immediately fall straight back. Beat coming out here early from Baptiste main. Uh, that might be just enough to get them the point. However, Ballin going to make sure they're rolling through this point, keeping the point in their control. Shidori almost able to take care of Mute here. However, High Noon coming out here from Mute, still in a very good spot right now. They see a couple people, but they're just not anywhere that they can kill them. And they won't, they won't be able to find anyone with that. However, it does flip the point. Yeah, it's enough to at least give them some space to work with. And, Ooh. oh, nice trade. Softlow does pop the barrage. They're immediately taken out there by Mute. They do find Bard, but here comes the Nano on to Professor. They are holding on to that Shatter there. Here it comes. However, I don't think it found anyone. They're able to get the Charger onto Shadori. That's a huge pick, but we are now in overtime. XQC did retake point there, and now Cabaret's trying their best here to win this team fight and flip the point back over. <laughs> it is just pure chaos on this point right now. Mine's coming out as well. And you see Professor just charge straight through a lot of them there, but Softlow able to find Bard at DPS Moira, finds Baptiste Main. The kills go in the way that XQC needs them to. Shidori does have this EMP ready to go here. The Coalescence coming out from DPS Moira. They're trying to end it with their namesake here, and they're going to be able to do just that. XQC 7s will take this first map. Still an, inc an incredibly close map, though. Uh, that really could have gone either way. XQC7s just ended up with more ultimates there in that last fight. And that's really what decided it for him. Yeah, and, you know, it, again, there was a couple good plays coming out there from the Cabarets, but I feel like that shatter that they had there late, especially with the Nano not finding anyone, really mm -hmm. hurt them there. Because that right there would have been yeah. the thing that gets that team fight one, flips the point over, and allows them some time to set up and wait for XQC7s to come back. Well, that's the hardest thing about playing Reinhardt into a ball comp. Who realistically are you shattering in that comp? I'm a Ryan main myself. I hate playing Ryan when there's a wrecking ball out on the floor because there's just, there's nothing for me to do. I feel like I'm just swinging at air all game. <laughs> so it probably feels very similar for the cabarets there in that fight. Yeah, and honestly, you know, throughout that first map there, we really only saw XQC7s play, I think, the same five characters. We never saw them swap off. Mm -hmm. uh, Cabarets, though, we saw them make swaps pretty frequently between points there. And last one, you know, they went to that brawl 
I just don't really ever think it truly worked out for them like they were hoping. Yeah, like I said, I just think there wasn't a target for them to really go on. There was just so much movement and mobility because you're running, you're running a Mercy Moira, if I if I recall correctly. Yeah, they're running a Mercy Moira, so you don't, you could force Fade out and try to go on the Moira, but you're gonna get you're gonna get poked out by all the other damage that's available. So it's, it's just it's, it's just tough. It's tough to play Reinhardt into that comp. Yeah, it really was. And I got to give the pharmacy some credit there for XQC7. They did a really good job making sure that mm -hmm. Softlow was just getting a lot of damage and finding a lot of kills and building up those barrages pretty fast there. Because you yeah. could definitely tell that as that, ser as that map was going on, Cabarets were definitely learning when to play safe and when they could go in based off how well they thought that Softlow had that barrage ready to go or not. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. There's really smart ult usage across the board on all the different maps. And I'm going to just take a wild shot in the dark guess that we're going to be going to King's Row on this next map. I, I could be surprised, you know, I could be surprised, but yeah, maybe. that's what I'm going to expect to see. And on that map, I think it's much more likely to see those Ramatra comps over the ball comps. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's a that's always a good guess. King's Row is always a good guess when we go to hybrid maps anyway. But yeah. I feel like we've seen a lot more people actually pick some some maps we don't normally see. I've seen a lot of Blizzard World this week. I've seen some mm. Eichenwalds, maybe even a Hollywood. A ho I saw Hollywood come out, I believe it was a couple days ago. And I thought it was a good just kind of off the wall kind of pick there. And it really ended up working for the team. Okay, okay, and it's looking like we are actually going to go to Blizzard World, like you said. So maybe the Cabarets have a particular comp that they want to play on Blizzard World, as opposed to just taking it to the usual King's Row. Uh, they did they did play really well on that D.Va composition, so I wouldn't be shocked to see them come out on that again. Yeah, that wouldn't shock me either here. But, you know, I feel like this Blizzard World is still one of those maps I haven't played enough in overwatch 2 just yet to kind of know what's the best kind of comp to go in and i feel like you can run ball you can run dive you can even run uh just i'm forgetting some comp names today man sigma <laughs> so, Sig sigma actually works yeah. surprisingly well on this map as well um you can you could do a wide variety of different things it's really just important that you you control the correct spaces on this map this map is really all about spacing and getting the right areas so for instance, uh, point two, you need to have control of the high ground on point two. Point one, you need to flush the enemy team out from that back high ground that's directly behind point. It's just, you just need to play a comp that does that, whatever that comp might be. But let me ask you this question, Shadow. I mean, XQC7's won that first map. Yeah, they won the last two points to win it. What do you think that the Cabarets here need to do to kind of respond? Because in my opinion, they played Lijong incredibly well it just felt like mm -hmm. when they went to that brawl comp, it just really was never a good match for the comp that the XQC team was running. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think is that Professor swapping off of the D.Va allowed Softlow to get a lot more poke damage in early. And like I said, while we were watching the map, playing grouped up super hard like that against a Wrecking Ball just allows for that... I don't know what to call it, cleave damage, when he swings through and just hits all the players at one time and then is able to hit the pile driver and then is able to hit his shields on five players to get 1100 health. It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot to try and deal with when you're grouped up. But when you're more like separated in a more separate comp, which is what the D.Va comp is more like, you're, you're able to deal with those individual targets a lot better, I feel like. And going into this map, do you think we are do you think we're gonna see ball and come back out on that ball there i mean it's their namesake the wrecking ball i mean and they never swapped off it there on li Zhang tower do you think they stick with the ball here and maybe you know go with a maybe a more traditional tank that you would normally see on this map uh it's very possible we could see the ball again but i'd honestly expect to see dueling divas on this map you he could he could just come out on the ball though if that's what they're most comfortable on and that's what they feel the best with you could do that i just i i would expect either dueling winstons or dueling divas hey okay. it's gonna be fun to see what they pick when they come out here with but you know i asked you the question of what do you think that the cabarets need to do what do you think that xqc7 need to do here they won that first map they have the momentum mm -hmm. but now they're going to a map pick that wasn't their own here it, it's kind of you know it's it comes down to the question of have they practiced this map enough have they seen this map enough uh be, throughout the playoffs they're throughout their playoff run here 
you really you just want to see the xqc sevens continue to be aggressive and go first right that's the big important thing that i noticed in map one is that they were always super aggressive they always went first with their ultimates and that's what would allow them to flip in the not so much flip, but able to keep fights in their favor over the course of an entire point. Yeah, and I mean, that aggression playstyle kind of basically comes from what tank they are running, in my opinion. I, I call Wrecking Ball kind of a disruption tank. They come in, they roll through people, knock them out of the way, knock them into spaces, and then they pile drive some mm -hmm. people up in the air. It's really just up to, at that point, the DPS to come in and try to clean them up. Because like you said, that Wrecking Ball can do a lot of damage just rolling through and pile driving these characters here. So, you know, yeah. disruption comp, I feel like is the best kind of name for it. And it kind of plays into them being very aggressive, not even with using their ultimates first. We saw them, especially on uh, Control Center, They saw you saw Ballin just roll straight through everyone there on mm -hmm. the cabarets to get stuff started. Yeah, yeah, Ab absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you just, you always wanna have a patient yet quick approach when you're running a dive comp, especially with Wrecking Ball because you're the fastest moving character pretty much in the game, as far as I'm aware at least. Uh, you can always get in position early and just sit there and sort of scout for your team, let everyone know where people are going to be at and who to target so that when you go in for that pile driver, you can go for one of those direct rocket shots in this case. But we are finally heading in to our second map of this grand final series. Like you said, mm -hmm. we're going to be heading to Blizzard World here. Looks like XQC will be attacking here first and the Cabarets will be defending here first. Now, like you also said, you expect to see dueling divas here. We're going to eventually see what each team's coming out with here right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would be shocked to see anything other than that. But if Balin just is one of those Wrecking Ball players, like I said, they might just want to run that all series. So <laughs> it's very possible that's what we'll just see. But Cabaret's coming out on this poke composition, which I've seen be pretty prevalent on this map as well. People really love running that Sigma on this map just because of the distance and poke you can do with the character. Yeah, so, I mean, we you predicted Dueling Divas, uh, not the case at all. You did talk about potentially seeing the Sigma here and Cabaret's coming out with that right now. Varded, going back to the Sombra that we saw them play on the first point in Lijang Tower. Mute, though, coming out with the Ash, in my opinion, is actually a really, really good pick for them. Yeah, Mute was absolutely popping off on the cast, so let's give Mute a pocket and a Dynamite and see how that works out. And you immediately see they have their target there of Softlow. They get booped off. They're able just to knock themselves back up there with that coach gun. However, Ballin immediately with all that pressure going to be able to force them off. And you see everyone here in the Cabaret just falling back. Yeah, you just kind of have to when you're getting knocked around like that. Professor gets Shidori, though. Yeah, Shidori has been taken out early in a lot of team fights before. And XQC looking like they might try to fall back here a little bit. However, Softlow here going to keep on raining in some damage here. Ballin going to have to get out. They're trying to keep themselves alive here. Yeah, Ballin getting a lot of work done on this Wrecking Ball, though. Look at look at this ult charge already just off of a couple of roll throughs and pile drives. Mute again. That will probably force out the res there from Kleinheld to get them back in this one here. As everyone for XQC is back in there now so they want to probably get this fight going here it's already a minute has been ticked off of the clock Ooh. and professor able to find dps moira there now has their side set on to klein held however ball able to find tiger there so that's a good trade for them one support for another however professor able to kill ball in there with the secretion softly though able to find mute right back and then they find baptiste main are they going to be able to get verted as well verted will recall themselves back and keep themselves alive and klein held be able to get ballin back in this fight yeah that's a huge pick going on to taiga early there it just kind of are we going to get a touch here i hope we can get a touch here but it's looking like we're not going to yeah, it looks like the Cabarets here are kind of going to play this a little bit safe. Try to hold them here at this choke point. Mm -hmm. We're looking at quite a few ults here as well. I I would expect Mute to probably toss Bob early. Professor gets Shidori again. It's been a theme so far this game that Shidori has fallen way before a team fight has even started. But again, they're playing a somber, so... It's just them getting caught out and not recalling fast enough. However, Softlo able to find Mute here. So no Bob is going to be invested here early by the Cabarets. However, we do see 
the Valkyrie come out here from Taiga, and you do see XQC fall back. Yeah, that's a that's a fair enough trade, I'll say. And Cabarets still have four ultimates. Both teams have so many ults. Uh, it's going to be crazy here. Fallen popping that minefield back there. I believe on the high ground, Verdant able to get them hacked, though, so they are not going to be able to roll away as fast as they want to. Verdant with some help there from Professor. Going to be able to take him out. Here comes Bob, though, from Mute. It's going to go right on the card. Actually, it goes right past Guard Hover. It's still able to do a lot of damage and force XQC to just hide behind some corners. Yeah, yeah, it gives uh, it gives Caporettes a minute to just sort of reset before this next fight starts. Varda gets another nice hack on the ball. On. Ball and able to escape that time, but they're not going to be able to escape from Baptiste Man. And DPS more and pop the Colette to try to keep them alive. However, they get hacked out of it there. And Mute going to be able to take them out. Here comes the flux from Professor. Does find Shadori. The Mirage, though, finds two. Make it three. There. Now they have their eyes set on the Baptiste Man. They're gone as well. Verda, though, able to find Klein Health. And it's really just Soft Blow and Ballin all by themselves right now. But XQC finally able to get some uh, push onto this card. Yeah, what a great barrage there from Softlow. Notices that Professor has used all their cooldowns already, and that's just an easy pop on the barrage to get a bunch of kills there. Uh, we're going to see EMP come out from Varded here. It needs to be big. Mute able to find DPS Moira out early. That's not what you want to see. Sidori does have this EMP ready to go too. Looks like they were potentially going to pop it there. Instead, they uncloaked themselves, took some shots. Softlow falls right there to Professor, and now XQC might have to fall back at the risk of losing any more people. However, Kleinheld just accepts death. Yeah, I mean, once the fight's lost, you may as well get your reset as fast as you possibly can. Ballin does go onto this D.Va now, though. It's interesting. It, it, interesting to see Ballin go off that ball. First time all series are playing something other than the Wrecking Ball here. Uh, but at this point, it's probably a much needed swap there for them as the ball has not been getting a lot of success or value ever since that first point. Barded still holding on this EMP. So is Shidori. EMP does come out from Shidori. Finds three. Softlo able to find Baptiste main there. Here comes the Valkyrie from both Mercies at the moment. And Bob also coming out from Mute on car right now so that'll prevent anyone there from pushing the card bob does find ballin out of that mech final though able to get them res back into this one softball though getting incredibly low gonna be kind of pocketed here actually falls down now they're getting pocketed back by client but again xqc just falling back here uh, yeah yeah ballin losing mech so early that was a really good hack by varded to get them out of mech just to really stop the fight in its tracks. Soft low, taking a nice look at the ground there, you know, uh, potentially lagging out. That that looked like a lagging out moment to me. Yeah. As someone who has lagged out of many a game, that looked like a lagging out moment. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it was a lagging out moment. We're going to a pause here, but you know, XUC, in my opinion, they had a little bit of a slow start. Won that first point off of a second team fight, but ever since then, hasn't necessarily looked the same and they, and, you have to give Cabarets a lot of credit here. They forced Ballin off the ball for the first time this series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of it is, like I mentioned on this map, you have to control the high ground on this particular, on this point in particular. A lot of teams get stuck on this second point because it's really hard to control that high ground. And they, XGC7's had it momentarily when Softlow got that barrage, but Softlow and Ballin were the only two players left, so you weren't able to get that full fight win in push like you'd like to so that's how we end up almost here at point and Varded still is holding on to this EMP so like this could this could go very poorly for XQC7s in this next fight in particular just because of this EMP they don't have any ults to respond with anyways they were gonna be close to barrage but now it's looking like Softflow is gonna get reset due to this disconnect yeah, and like you said, Verdant has been holding on this EMP now for at least three team fights. So I'll chalk it up to about a minute and a half, just waiting for the good opportunity right now. But in my opinion, like they've done good even without using that EMP, and they've really yeah. made sure to go after Ballin, especially in that on that Diva now. Yeah. It's just unless they're shooting at you, it just provides you a free opportunity to hack them. Essentially, that's just a, a free DMEC right there, and we've seen them, yeah. like I said, just be an absolute just menace right now to Ballin. Yeah, yeah, the same case on the Wrecking Ball as well, where where they're just constantly hacking them, getting a free kill onto them. And it's looking like we're going to go to a short break here while we figure out these technical difficulties, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back from that little break there. We'll be getting back into the lobby here momentarily. We believe that everyone has reconnected to the lobby and we will continue with our Blizzard World map here right now. But Shadow, what have we necessarily seen from both sides so far? Um, honestly, Cabarets are just doing a really good job of focusing down Ballin consistently and just not really letting them play the game that much. Yeah, and we do come back to it. Soft float back here. Shidori also making a swap now to an Ash of their own. And like we talked about before we went to break, Verted still holding on to this EMP. And at this point, my feeling is they're going to hold on to it for a final fight. Uh, it's very possible. Very possible. I wouldn't be surprised to see them pop it here. However, they just need to get that hack there onto Ball. And the Colette's coming out from DPS Moira here. You immediately see them fall back. But DPS Moira, I believe they were stunned out of it. Soft float, though, able to find Fappenstein there or Faptis main, and they're gonna try to just get some more kills right now, and no one really even looking at them, but they're just missing their shots. Yeah, direct rockets are very difficult to hit though, to be fair. Cabarets have five ultimates now. You guys see them pop something here, right? Ballin popped their bomb. They're not able to find anyone with it, but like you said, Cabarets, five ultimates. They're using the Valkyrie here first. Bird is still holding on that EMP, but a lot more in their disposal here at the moment. XQC really will only be able to get this barrage and a Valkyrie of their own up on here, unless Shador is able to hit a couple headshots here. But the barrage now up for Softlo. Here comes the damage matrix from Cabarets. Mute able to find Shador. There's no Bob. And the heck, half the team for XQC gone. Bob, though, gonna come out here for Mute. Find out every Softlo back in this. Here comes the flux. The barrage from Softlo has to be huge, but it only finds one. Verdant able to find Ball in there out of their mech. Bob will be able to take care of them. Now the EMP comes out. They want to end this map and they want, or end this round, and they want to do it now. Down goes Softlo. But we do see Shadora come back on the tracer. They immediately get hacked. Klein held. No supports left now for XQC. Shadori trying to do their best, but the timer will just run out just as DPS Moira arrives. Yeah, there was just. There was just too many ultimates for the side of Cabarets, honestly. And when the barrage wasn't big from Softlo, there wasn't really much left for XQC7s to try and take this with. So it was just it was just a alt economy difference. That's that's really all that happened there. Um, I'd I'd well, I'd like to see if XQC7s are going to come out and mirror this Sigma comp because I think that might be. That might be the best chance you have here is to just straight up mirror the comp. I mean, we're about two seconds away from seeing what they're going to come out with here. Ball and not decided at the moment. It looks an awful lot like something a Sigma would slot into, though. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. They pop out, they bring out the Sigma here. Cabarets, though, you know, they're still looking at potentially what tank they're going to be running. Yeah, I'm sure Professor will just pop off on this Sigma again. The big difference here is the Verted Sombra versus the Soft Low Torb. That's going to be the only differentiating factor here, assuming Professor picks Sigma as well. So who can Verted get these hacks off onto? Ah, cool. Really, Kleinhild is who you probably got to be looking for if you're if you're Verted. Yeah, at this point with the with the tank lineup and the DPS is that XQC is running with, you're either looking for the Torb or the support line, in my opinion, right now. Verted immediately get a hack that large health pack. Professor able to find that turret out early, though, because I believe Sufflo actually threw it by their spawn. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, but they're going to get the res off to get Shidori back into this one here. The, mine, the dynamite coming out there does get a couple members of XQC there. So Christian coming out from Ball and will be able to stop Professor there from eating up a lot of damage. DPS Moira and Softlo almost out of the picture right now, but they will get healed back up. Softlo's turret though, out. Mute just continuing to pop off on this Ash, just hitting shot after shot, getting big dynamites off. Uh, you see Verted uncloak right there, try to get rid of Softlo, however, Client held right there to keep them supported like they were every other map at the moment. However, Cabaret's here. Trying to get something going. Each team has not lost anyone yet, but as I say that, Shidori falls. They're able to get Rez again back into this fight, and that kind of forces Cabarets here to play a little bit smarter. Oh, but Cabarets still have Mute alive. Mute is gonna have Bob in about two seconds. That could be a big point taker right there. 
look at the difference between Mute and Shidori here. Sofla though finally will fall. We're not gonna see a res come out here as Bob is now on the field here for the Cabarets. And you see just the aggression coming out here from the Cabarets. Two kills going their way. Balno able to find Varden right there, but this might be the first point going over to the Cabarets. Yeah, Bob, sixth man of the year coming out and just clearing that point off for the side of Cabarets. And they only had to burn that in Valkyrie, but XQC7's also burned their Valkyrie. So that's a trade that you'll take if you're Cabarets. Yeah, and a absolutely a trade you'll take there. One support ult for another support ult and help both both the uh, Baptista are about to have their damage matrix ready as well. But Mute, a dead eye in the first map, a dead eye in the second map so far, fighting Shidori out early. Oh my goodness, look at these shots. Flux coming out here from Ballin. Doesn't find anyone with it just yet, but Chidori able to find Professor as they come back down to Earth. Mute though, continuing the hot streak, find Soplo. Oof, a little bit of an air ball from Ballin there, uh, but Verded is going to have this EMP. Hat goes on to the Mercy. Oh, they're almost able to get rid of them. Kleinheld able to keep themselves up in that one right now. Cabarets though, kind of forgetting about the cart, but who cares about the cart when Mute's finding these headshots? Oh, that is just some gross shots coming out from Mute. Just continuous headshots on this Ash. Here comes the Molencore through the damage matrix, but you immediately see everyone in Cabaret's fall back. No one will fall to this Molencore, but it will take away some time. Really smart retreat from Cabaret's, and you got two ultimates out of XQC7s while you're still holding on to, to all five ults of your Cabaret's. Damage Matrix now coming out from the Cabaret's Verdict, able to find soft flow there. Everyone in XQC trying to play behind corners, not wanting to get caught out in front of that field. Mute able to find Shidori again, but Fallen secretes Professor out of that flux. Here comes the bomb, it already finds two. Varden finds a third, and that will be the end of of Blizzard World here, Cabarets will tie this series at one. Yeah, Mute just absolutely dominating on this Ash pick. Bob, sixth man of the year, like I said, he came in and popped off as well the two times he came in on attack. Wouldn't be surprised if this was a Bob play. I believe this is the, this is the Bob play that end the game here. A great Bob throw right there. The EMP also coming out really helped them as well there. So a good team play coming out there from the Cabarets to end Blizzard World there to tie this grand final series up at one. Hey, and remember, that was their map pick. They won it. Mm -hmm. They desperately needed that one, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. You want to keep a grand final series close. You don't want to get your mental boomed. You can get your mental boomed very quickly if you lose two maps in a row. But going back and forth like this, you're still kind of hyping yourself up. You know, you're still excited to be here. You're like, hey, we got a fighting chance. It's going to be a close game. We played these guys close last time. We're going to play them close again. So now we're going to be moving on to an escort map. And I'm really curious to see what XQC7s are going to pick because they're going to want to go a map where that favors that wrecking ball, I feel like. Yeah, in, in, in your opinion, what map does that kind of play into? In my opinion, maybe something like Havana along lines where that ball will roll through. But at the same point, if you're mm -hmm. picking Havana, you're just allowing Mute to just have absolute long sight lines yeah. there. And we've seen already through the first two maps, they don't necessarily need them, but they would sure as hell welcome them. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a tough call. Maybe something like a Rialto might be good. What what else is there on escort? Um, we could we could see Shambali again. A, team, a lot of teams have really loved picking that Shambali Monastery map, and that does have like a lot of corners and whatnot that you can peek and hide behind. And I've seen Wrecking Ball be pretty successful there. Yeah, and Shambali still, being one of those newer maps, I feel like there's still a lot of teams who haven't necessarily played it a lot, in my opinion. And you see a lot of teams pick it because they still think that. But at this point, I think most teams have enough experience on it. It just really comes down to what comps they're running. Uh, because yeah. in my opinion, Shambali Monastery is a great Sigma map. And we just saw Sigmas yeah. be very successful here on Blizzard World. I think the big key has been has been Verted on that Sombra though. Verted Sombra has been completely denying any value from Balan, or at least on Blizzard World, was completely denying any value from Balan just repeatedly, just repeatedly hacking them as soon as they decided to try and do pretty much anything. Yeah, absolutely right there. Like I said, they forced Balan off the ball for the first time there. That might've been more of a good team swap 
uh, their four uh, ball in any way going from the ball to that diva, but they really didn't allow them to play diva that much. The bomb that came out from them didn't necessarily find really any value. I really believe it was just a, a remake bomb that came out there for Ballin. Uh, so honestly, the DPS line right now for the Cabarets have done their job. They're doing what they need to do. You have Mute picking up the kills and you have the uh, Shidori, or no, it's not. Uh, Verted. Verted. Verted doing a lot of support stuff, but still being able to find a lot of kills as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's really what you like to see. You like to see one DPS being like a flanker distractor, if you will, mm -hmm. and just causing kind of disruption wherever they can. And it's looking like we do have our map pick, so map three is going to be Shambhali Monastery doesn't surprise me at all i've seen that constantly be the map three that's like the, the king's row of escort if you will yeah it's it's slowly starting to become the king's row of escort even though it's one of the newer maps right now but like i said at, at least this first little push area i feel like plays really well into a sigma uh, the sigma poke comps in my opinion have been some of the strongest comps i've seen ran especially on the first the, the push to the first point here so it's yeah. gonna be really interesting to see what xqc sevens come out with here if they're gonna stick with that ball or if they're gonna maybe surprise us with something else yeah yeah they might they might just run the sigma right back at them and try and mirror well we'll really we'll really just have to wait and see what it is that they're gonna decide to do because that Sombra, that Sombra pick from Verted in particular is going to pretty much deny Ballin that chance to play Wrecking Ball like they want to. And maybe almost any other tank that they want to play either because they came out on the D.Va after they got off the ball and pretty much got shut down there. I don't mm -hmm. think we saw a lot of hacks come on them when they were playing that Sigma on defense. But at the same time, that defensive round only lasted about a couple minutes. We didn't really have a large... Uh, a large little look at if there was going to be a lot of hacks coming out of them and also if mute is just going to continue to hit every shot they take on every character they play you know how, how much you know what what can they really do about it if you're the xqc sevens it's it's a lot to deal with when somebody's just popping off that hard on ash mm -hmm. but as we load into the map here now we're going to be able to see what each team's going to come out with here. Cabaret's on the defense first. XQC's on the attack here first. Yeah, and uh, and here comes the ball comp that we saw on map one. Literally the exact same composition. And we're seeing a Baptiste Ana from the side of Cabaret's. Is the Ana perhaps to sleep the wrecking ball? I'm kind of curious why Taiga's coming out on this Ana and not the Mercy Pocket again. If it is to sleep the Wrecking Ball, then they have only one goal, and it is to make sure Ballin's life is a living hell uh, to come out here. So I'm going to be really interested to see how Taiga does here, but XQC coming out on essentially the comp they ran the entirety of Li Zhang here. Yeah, yeah, let's see what value Softlow can get on this far uh, with Mute hitting shots like this now. Gates are open. Kleinheld looks to begin these shots here first from Mute, but you do see Slothlow here just pumping in a lot of rockets onto that high ground, trying to find anyone they can. Sh Shidori trying to come around the back, find anyone they can with a hack there. Mute gets incredibly low. Slothlow able to win this fight here to start out with no mercy. There's going to be no res to get them back into this fight. Yeah, which, what I want y'all to notice as well, look at how Softlow is using these uh, these roofs to really just block any potential shots from coming into them. It's just allowing them to get a lot of damage in. Yeah, that's a good, a really good point there. Like, they're able, I've seen a lot of pharmacies on this map for that same reason. They're able to kind of use these roofs and use the little overhangs from the roofs to kind of block a lot of damage. It really helps them out there. And look at them right now, Softlow. 81% to a barrage. Verdant, you know, is the is the next closest DPS to their ultimate at 43%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. With mute going down so early, it's just it's hard for them to it's gonna be hard for them to get value without a pocket. Honestly, going into a far pocket. Ball and hacked here, able to keep themselves alive. But they are staying aggressive. Here comes the barrage. It finds one on the Baptiste main. There finds the other support of Taiga. This might be this first point. Or to going to XQC XQC seven here by Mute. Able to find Softly here to keep their team alive in this fight. However, 
They're incredibly not healthy, and DPS Moira are going to be able to get the kill there. Execute seven now, and just need to get the bodies back on the card as X as DPS Moira continues to find some kills here. And yeah, big barrage from Soft Low again, using using the cover of the building to just kind of pop right over the back. Like most players aren't going to be looking for that. So that's a quick, easy kill onto both of the supports for Cabarets to really confirm that point. But Cabarets have five ults coming into this fight. Yeah, but XQC7 still about to have four ultimates ready as well. The EMP, maybe the minefield may be the biggest that we have to be watching out for here. Varded, though, does have this EMP of their of their own ready. And this is a really good choke point here for them to find. And Mute already able to get a little soft blow over there. Immediately revs back up the hack, come back here on to ball. And however, look at that. Shidori finds one. Down goes Mute as well. And the, the XQC team just is able to continue finding kill after kill here. Yeah, the XQC7s, when they're able to go aggressive and go first in these fights, they're able to really stagger these kills out so well. Yeah, you, you saw everyone there on the cabarets fall back who were alive. They can come back out with some ultimates here. Professor does have the flux, which could get them all off the cart here. And I imagine that's what's going to happen. Here comes the flux. They're immediately going to focus on a couple members here. They find to the MP, though, coming out from Verdant. Doesn't find anyone, it looks like. So that EMP wasted there for the cabarets. And XQC's right now 1.77 meters away from capping this one. However, we do see cabarets here picking up a couple kills. Mute has their eyes set here on ball. And the ball is just going to fall back and regroup with their team. Yeah, a good, good fall back and regroup. Cabarets did use four ultimates there, but they are still going to have the window available. But Soft Low has Barrage again. Nice kill by Mute. Mute again, just picking up where they left off. Last time, Shidori, though, able to take Mute out from behind there. The, the res can get Soft Low back into this fight here. And XQC, if they push the aggression right now, could be able to cap this point here very fast. Because like you said, only one ultimate ready right now for the Cabarets. But Shidori played a little bit too close there. Wanting to get that EMP off, not going to be able to find anyone. As Baptiste main finds them instead, and they pop their own damage matrix. With the Mirage coming out from Soflo, will get them that second point just from the just from the pressure that it put on to the Cabarets. Yeah, that and Ballin booping the players back just a little bit. That nice little knockback was able to stop them from really getting that touch in. Yeah, but now we're on to the final push here for XQC. About four minutes in that time bank right now, and they do still have this EMP ready to go here. Ballin does have mines, but Mute, again, able to find soft flow early. However, the Rez is going to get them back up. Yeah, Rez is just such a strong ability. Nice shot again by Mute. Mute still looking for those shots right now. On to either the ball, Ballin or Kleinfeld here. They're focusing a lot on ball right now. XQC going to come back into this one with three ultimates of their own. Cabaretso, again, close to all five ultimates being ready. EMP comes out here from Shidori. Look at that. They find three, and that's going to be a good team fight win there for the XQC 7s. Yeah, just a really nice EMP mine combo there. Kleinheld did manage to hold on to this Valkyrie as well, so that'll give everybody a nice little damage boost coming in. But Professor, Professor, Mute, and Inverted, and Faptiste Main are all going to have ultimate. This Gravitic Flux needs to be big from Professor. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Especially, I mean, they need to try to get rid of Shidori first, in my opinion. You don't want to be hacked out of that alt right there. Mute, though, trying to find anyone they possibly can. Missing some shots. A rare thing for them so far this series right now. But look at how far XQC has already pushed this cart. It's very close to the end. The Valkyrie and the Bob coming out here for some ultimate being played. But here comes the coalescence from DPS Warrior. However, they're going to get shut down here by Faptiste main. Faptiste main trying to get rid of Soflo. However, the Bob, they're going to be able to handle it for them. Fallen gets hacked here. That damage boost there for Bard is huge right now. They're going to be able to get rid of them with some help from the Professor. And it looks like the Caparets will be able to kind of stabilize. Yeah, and it only cost you a window and a bob, so you're you're still sitting it on three ultimates if you're Cabarets. You really you just have to watch out for Softlow's barrage. Softlow's barrages have all been so big for the XQC sevens, so like that's that's the big one for me here. Yeah, but look at the Cabarets. They're still holding on to a couple big ultimates right now. And Mute able to find Softlow early, but like almost every time, Kleinfeld gonna get them right back up. 
fight still going on here. You see Shidori try to get a lot of damage in that back line. Ballin comes in, immediately gets hacked. They have to try to roll away to keep themselves alive. They do have a minefield ready to go. Here's the Valkyrie being popped here by Tiger to make sure everyone on their team is being supported in this fight. Softlo trying to sneak behind the map right now, but not enough fuel to do it. They're just trying to find any angle to get this barrage off. Yeah, they're gonna kind of just look for this opening and for the professor to not have any cooldowns. Barrage like right now. Coming out from Softlo, but oh. Mute shuts them down. Ball and Fun's burden. Almost a minute left in this point. The MP did come out there from Barter to counter Ballin's Mines on point. Mute will find Klein held there. And again, this might be a force back here from Cabaret's the the flux comes out from Professor, but finds no one. However, the EMP from Shidori does find a couple of DPS more and immediately finds two right off of that. But I don't think there's enough members of XQC to keep this fight going. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's honestly a worthwhile trade because it didn't look like Professor was gonna catch anybody with that uh with that Gravitic Flux. So getting the EMP out of Shidori is actually a, a preferable trade, I would say, in that situation. Mute does have Bob available and Baptiste Main has this window also. Both of those ultimates together were fight winning for Cabaret's last time. Let's see if it's gonna do the same here. Yeah, and 25 seconds remaining, essentially, in my opinion, makes it last fight territory here for XQC if they want to try to complete this map. Fallen just gonna come in pile drive on that back line. Immortality Field being invested here a little bit early by Baptiste Main. Uh, but you immediately see Softlow get rid of Ballin though. Almost taken out. Here comes the damage majors. You see them try to get rid of Ballin there. However, I don't think they'll necessarily find a lot. Ballin being very dangerous here. They're gonna get punished for it. Baptiste Main finds them there. Time has ex expired here. We're in overtime right now. Verdant able to keep themselves alive. They swap over to the soldier now. Uh, the Valkyrie coming out here from Taiga. Professor does find DPS Moira. Mute still trying to get rid of Softlow there, but no supports left on the field for XQC. Softlow taken out as well. There goes Shidori, and 86 meters will be all that XQC gets. However, Ballin back here to try to keep this cart push alive. The minefield's coming out. Can they be able to find anyone? No, Mute shuts them down. Yeah, really, really good hold there from the side of the Cabarets. And just like you said, Ballin playing a little bit too dangerously there. You don't want to pile drive in front of a window when you have 100 health left. That's just not, that's probably not going to go well for you. Yeah, not at all right there, but, you know, it, it's desperate. Desperation basically was my, is what I'm thinking was the thing there. Just trying to get Absolutely. anyone away from that wide open area up there, trying to get the Baptiste or the Baptiste main to fall down away from that damage matrix. It was just desperate there and they just, you know, weren't able to do it just enough there. Absolutely. But that being said, still a really good push on this map. This map is tough to cap first point on, which seems to be the case for every escort map for some reason. I don't know what it is. First and third point are just impossible on escort maps. Second point, not so much usually. Um, but Cabarets are looking to go D.Va this time. So Professor probably trying to help out on soft low by swapping uh, swapping over to this D.Va. Yeah, and XQC, again, coming back out with essentially what they ran on every map besides Blizzard World here. And at this point, I feel like this is just going to be what we see from them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It could just be comfort picks across the board for all of them. But here we go. Doors are open. Yeah, you immediately see Professor eating up a lot of that damage right there. Or just, you know, taking it head on. Looks like they're actually prioritizing pushing this cart a little bit more. But the Sombras actually run into each other there. <laughs> just Sombra things, you know. A quick Sombra moment. <laughs> Yeah, but now you see Professor here get a little bit aggressive and immediately go after Ball and they're trying to put as much damage to them as they possibly can. The hack coming out there onto DPS Moira, but the hack coming out from uh, Sidori does not find anyone. And look at how far the Cabarets have already pushed this cart. Yeah, they're just getting some nice cart progress for free, honestly. There's not really too much that XQC7s can do to stop them with the comp that they're playing. That is the weakness of the ball comp. You can't really stay that objective focused. Mute has their eyes set on the skies right now, but Shidori able to find Baptiste Main in the back line there. Mute hitting themselves out of this one as Tiger falls as well there. So no supports on the field right now for the Cabarets. And you immediately see the rest of their team fall just after that. Yeah, yeah, that's what the ball comp's really good at. The ball comp is really good at getting kills. Usually they're not the best at doing things on the actual objective themselves. 
Uh, but soft low, 86% on this barrage. Ballin almost has the minefields as well. There, there's going to be a lot of ultimates coming out of the XQC7s this fight. That barrage for being the first and foremost, though. Yeah, we've seen Softlow and their history in the past in the series. They get those barrages, they immediately use them, but they're not going to be able to do that this time as Mute shuts them down. Fine help. I almost thought they weren't going to get that dress off there, but you immediately see the hack coming there on the bar. Shadori able to take him out. Softlow back up in the fight. It will take out Baptiste Main. Ballin, though, out of the picture right now. And Softlow, they took themselves out with their own barrage. Over DPS Moira picking up where they left off. Finds two kills. And Professor is going to get de mecked here and probably staggered out. Yeah, the DPS Moira is actually putting in a lot of work for the XQC 7s here, getting a lot of these kill confirms. Damage Orb does a lot more damage than you would expect it to do. But Cabarets are going to walk into this fight with all of their ultimates. Mute has been really big with these bobs. Can they do the same here? Yeah, and Professor does have a bomb ready to go here, but, you know, the only thing that was invested in that last fight was that barrage, and it only took out Sofla there. Uh, Valkyrie coming out here from Tiger to get started. Pile drive will come out there from Ballin, as they actually denied the hack with doing that here. But still, each team just looking for the first kill here. The Coalescence coming out from DPS Moira. DPS Moira finds one. Mute does find Ballin, however. And then down goes Vard to XQC7. doing a great job so far here by Mute. Trying to pick up the slack for their team. Yeah, they're going to try to, but Soft Low has just already taken out too many players in the back line. Flying over the top of those buildings is providing so much value. And here comes the stagger onto the Baby Diva. Yeah, but... With some support now, they might be able to not fall here, and they're playing very far back. All they need to do is hit a couple more pop shots to be able to get back in their mech. Yeah, most definitely. That cost a lot of ults from the Cabarets, too, for them to not win that fight. Soflo almost has another barrage. Mute used Bob somewhere in that last fight as well, but here comes the minefield from Ballin. Mute accidentally just backs right up into one, and that will force the Cabarets here to fall back and regroup. Yeah, the XQC7s are really just winning a fight off of like one ultimate just over and over again. It's not really costing them that much. And what what I need, you're gonna, Soflo, Soflo has the barrage still, like I said. It's it's going to be big time probably because they've just been so huge with all these barrages. Shidori able to get that hack there on. Pressing the EMP comes out. It hits all five members of the Cabarets here. But Varden finds Soflo. They do have that barrage ray bomb coming out here from Professor. Won't be able to find anyone. Soflo back in the fight. They immediately find Pap, Main, and Tiger. Both supports out here for the Cabarets. Here comes the barrage, but it's going to be eaten up there by the Professor. However, like I said, no supports right now for the Cabarets. And you see what's going to happen because of that both DPS down now. It's really just up to the Professor. They're going to get demeched here and then quickly kill because we're in overtime. Yeah, and just a really, really dominant map there for the side of the XQC7s. You can see why this was their map pick. You, they definitely practice that map a lot. They know all the angles to play from. They, they, know, they know what they're doing, quite honestly, on this map. Yeah, they absolutely do here. DPS Moira getting the play of the game. And doing their namesake, honestly, being able to pick up a lot of kills has been very, has helped their team out a lot through the two maps that they've won so far this series. Yeah, yeah, they've done a really good job of providing just enough healing. Mm -hmm. Just enough healing that it doesn't like offset all the damage they're trying to do. Yeah, but you know, that was such a big map win there for this XQC7's team. Again, their mm -hmm. map pick, they're, they're 2 and 0 on their map picks now. But with that being the end of the third map, we're going to take a little bit of a break here. We'll come back to the Cabaret's next map pick and map four. So stick around. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone, from that little break there. This is the EU uh, console diamond tier finals here right now. Uh, currently, right now, XQC Sevens up on top of up on top two one uh, Shadow. Uh, what have we necessarily seen so far? Uh, honestly, if XQC Sevens is able to play the ball comp and honestly just do exactly what they want to do on that ball comp with the far pocket. It's, it's gone really, really well for them. And so when when Caparets is able to force them off of that comp, it looks like it's a lot more in Caparets' favor. So that being said, we have our map pick for push, which is going to be Esperanza. Now, I don't know if any of the maps play particularly well to Wrecking Ball, but we have seen Ballin is at least going to come out and try to play Wrecking Ball on every single map. Yeah, and we also have a couple of swaps from the side of Cabarets I'd also like to mention. Uh, Chimps has come in on tank for Professor, and Zoro has swapped in on DPS for Verded. It's going to be interesting to see how those two come in here. We haven't seen them so far, so and one of them being the tank here definitely makes me feel like that they're coming in specifically for push. Yeah, I see a lot of teams pretty much run Winston on Esperanza. A lot of teams really love that Winston Ana Lucio sort of comp on this map. So I wouldn't be too surprised if that's what Caparets decide they want to do here. But looking over at the side of XQC7, I still feel like this is a map that they can come out and run ball. It really just comes down to yeah. can they shut them down? And so far, throughout the three maps of this series, the team that has picked the map has been the winner of it here so i'm really wondering if we're going to see that kind of trend continue here yeah we very well could see it go that way um it's really just a matter of i'm not sure what zoro is coming in for what dps are they wanting to play that's what i'm going to be really curious to see for the side of cabarets well they are they are taking the spot of verted who has normally been their they're Sombra, and we've seen them play Soldier, and a bunch of other uh, characters throughout this series so far. So, you know, it, maybe they're coming in and do just the exact same. Maybe they one-trick someone that we haven't necessarily seen just yet. But Mute's staying in there, and, and they've been an absolute dead-eye so far through the series. But, mm -hmm. you know, on the last map, it kind of seemed like they were not finding the same value they were getting in the first two maps. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it very well could be a Tracer as well. I don't think we've seen too much Tracer yet. And if the side of Cabarets are going to be going for that Winston comp, Winston Tracer is a classic. You know, put those two together and see what happens. Yeah, but, you know, I expect XQC to come out here on the ball. Uh, there are, I'm, In my Absolutely. opinion, they're always going to start out with it and then make a swap later. Cabarets, though, on the other hand, with Chimps coming in being a different tank, you said Winston is normally played here a lot. I don't think we've seen him play Winston at all through those first three maps. So you might be absolutely right with who they're coming, what tank they're coming in to play. Yeah, and you know, I just aesthetically love the idea of someone named Chimps coming in to play the monkey character. That's just, that's just me. 
I mean, if that's what happens, you have a dude named Chimps playing Winston, and you have a guy named Ballin playing the ball. And let's not forget DPS Moira. <laughs> let's not forget DPS Moira playing the role of DPS Moira. Yeah, exactly. This Everybody's really upfront about what they're doing in this lobby, and I like it. Five, yeah, but a, a surprise coming out here. Zoro coming in, like you six, said, for uh, Varded. Uh, coming out with the Sombra, and I thought, you know, through those first three maps, Varded had done really good on the Sombra. I did as well. I'm curious. Maybe it's just a particular uh, set comp they always have. They always have these five players play on push maps. Look at the split right now for XQC7 here. They have three of their members in this little area over here. Now they're finally rolling back to regroup with the rest of their team, but the bot about to be open here. Yeah, and really just kind of both teams just poking at each other. They're looking for Mute really hard. If they get Mute, that's going to be their go sign. Yeah, and look at that. DPS Moira able to find Mute there with some help from Softlow there. XQCs do have control of the body. are starting to push it a little bit. And now Softlow getting very aggressive here with Shimps. Going to be able to take them out there with some help from Shidori as well. You're going to wonder if that's going to force the, the Cabarets here to fall back a little bit. And the only thing I will mention as well, if you're Cabarets, who are you going after as Winston in that comp that the XQC7s are playing? As we see the swap to D.Va comp coming in, because as you can see, soft low, already 75, 80, nice shots, Mute. Mute, gonna find soft low, but much like we saw last map, soft low immediately getting res back up into this one by Client Held, the bot now in control of the Cabarets here. But the champs in gets incredibly low here. We're seeing Mute here just pop shots into anyone they could see here and still they're able to find Shador here a nice pickoff for them there now Jims has very much free reign to kind of do whatever they want without that hack into play uh yeah yeah most definitely and we're looking at about a lot of ultimates coming through here can Soflo be big with this barrage again Oh, but look at Baptiste Man able to find DPS more routes no coalescence is fine unless Kleinheld wants to use the rest to get them back into it yeah, yeah, and, and honestly, still just more and more poke coming in. Who's going to go first with these ultimates? I want to see this Kitsune come out early from Taiga. Yeah, Cabaret's doing a good job here pushing this card, and XQC playing very safe at the moment. Ballin trying to be a little bit aggressive on that backline gets hacked, but will be able to roll away with their life. Yeah, and Soft Low still just trying to get in position for this barrage. Uh, looks like Softlow fell at some point during that fight, but they're immediately able to get Rez back up. Cabaret uh, trying to get this bot to this first checkpoint right now, but it looks like they should be able to take the lead with how much or how well they've been able to force back the XQC team here. But look at this. Ten ultimates on the board. Checkpoint got by Cabaret's as well. They're probably going to back off now. No, no, they're going to keep it pushing. They're going to keep it pushing. I like the aggression. When you're mute, there is no backing off. Baptiste Man able to find DPS Moira there. Here comes the High Noon. They're looking for anyone, but look at how much they're... Just the High Noon force everyone back there from XQC. They're able to find Kleinheld, but look at all this free bot push they're now getting. Chimps here going after Softlow. They're going to be able to escape here, but Baptiste Man trying to get rid of them. However, Chimps flying up in the sky after them will be able to take care of them. And now the Cabarets just continue to add on to their lead. This is just complete pandemonium right now, and nobody's ulting. The only ult that came out so far was that Deadeye from Mute. I have no idea what's about to happen here. There's going to be a lot of Q's pressed going into this next fight. It's, it's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Baptiste main is going to be the biggest one, though, with the sound barrier, I think. I think that's going to be the fight decider for Kemperitz. Shidori coming in, popping that EMP. We'll find three off at the... the Beat coming in right after that, and the Katsuni rush as well. Shidori, first one to fall here for XQC as Cabarets continue their dominance on this map. But here comes a Coalescent from DPS Moira. Not enough to keep Ballin alive. And now you see the hack come out there. Try to come out there from Zora. Not able to get Softlow, though. Able to find Mute there. Cabarets still do have the numbers advantage right now. However, XQC 7s do have the spawn advantage. Barrage coming out. We'll get mostly in there, but Shidori able to find Baptiste main there. That might just be enough to force the Cabarets to fall back here. Yeah, yeah, but you got over 100 meters. That's a really big number. Taiga getting staggered, though. 
Yeah, but they still have these forward spawns here for the moment, and Taiga might just be able to get it. I believe they're going to be able to get that forward spawn, so we're going to see a pretty quick re-engage here by the Cabarets. They don't have their suit, though, Chimps doesn't, so I'm not sure how much you can really re-engage until Chimps has that suit back. I mean, you see Chimps trying to just find some pop shots onto anyone they can from XQC here. Softly, though, able to find Chimps before they're able to get re though. That's a huge play for them. And it looks like Cabarets might just allow XQC to get this first checkpoint. Yeah, yeah. If you're Cabarets, you probably want to back off until Chimps is available. Ballin goes down, though. Uh, I think the back off call is now is off as they find Ball and mm -hmm. DPS Mora out as well. Mm -hmm. Cabaret's just finding more and more mute, just finding kill after kill. It's much like it's it's exactly like map two all over again. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. The map pick. Um, oh my goodness, Taiga with the nice kunai's on the Shidori. And even with. I mean, the forward spawn's now gone here for XQC7, but you're gonna see some try to keep going. Oh, but Mute almost able to find Softlow. That would've been such a huge pick because there's gonna be no way that res got back off. High Noon coming out here from Mute. They're able to find Softlow, a huge pick for them. Will it force out the res? Actually, it won't as the Casino Rush is invested in this one. They're able to find Client Held. Down goes Shidori as well. And the Cabarets now back in control of the bot, extending their lead. Really nice use of just two ultimates to win that fight outright. The XQC7s, though, going to have four ultimates here. Uh, Shidori, Shidori and Baptiste main. If, if Baptiste main can stay out of this EMP and get the beat off again like they did last time, Cabarets have a good chance of completing this map right here. They force ball off the ball. They're now over to the Ramatra here. EMP coming out only hits two here, but I think they'll take that. The bomb coming out softly though, able to find one with the barrage and one just before it right now. So they have the numbers advantage to try to find some more picks. DPS more does find Taiga there, but you do see Zoro try and do their best. Chimps trying to find anyone they can, but at this point, they're just gonna accept death. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you'll take that if you're the side of Cabarets. 129 meters, pretty good push. That's going to be hard to match if you're the side of XQC7s. Uh, they are, they do still have that EMP available as well as the Coalescence. They could just pop both of those things and try and get the tick damage out on the Cabarets, or at least force out the sound barrier from Faptiste Main before this Annihilation is available from Bot 1. Yeah, but the Cabarets all able to get that forward spawn. Spawn just reset, but like I said, Gonna be a quick re-engage here for them. Chimps almost actually DMEC there. But you do see XQC7s here applying a lot of pressure up onto this high ground, just trying to get them off of it. Oh, Chimps getting close to losing that mech. You're playing a dangerous game here, Chimps. Softlow able to find Taiga out early. Oh, the grenade tries to come out there on Shidori, but Shidori recalls himself away from that one to keep themselves in it. Ball and just throwing punches, able to find Faptiste main there. And XQC7 is able to get the DMEC there and take care of Chimps. They're going to be able to get control back of the bot and start their push again. And it didn't cost any ultimates from what I saw, so we're looking at another big ult fight there are so many ults available and i think again it's gotta be faptiste main with the sound barrier if, K if faptiste main can give enough sustain to their team with the sound barrier they can turn this fight shidori does have this emp though so that could be a really good counter there to that sound barrier if they pop it off right after it however Cart kind of being stalled here a little bit by the Cabarets. Casino Rush coming out here from them as well as the Valkyries being popped here and the Annihilation from Ball and EMP coming out as well. And it's just death in their disruption right there. But Zoro able to find soft load there. However, they're just continuing to find kill after kill here. They just need to get rid of chimps here on the cart and they're going to be able to start their push again. Still down about 20 or 30 meters here. Yeah, that is that is really big though for them to win that fight while getting both support alts out of Cabarets. Cabarets are still gonna have bomb, dead eye, and EMP though, but Softlow has been massive with these barrages, so I'm looking to see what they're gonna do here. High noon coming out, it's gonna be able to find Softlow. Lionel's gonna have to get this res off fast if they want to try to get them back in this one. Doesn't look like they're gonna be able to though. However, we see the Ramash there going in that Nemesis form, but look, they're trying to get the press off, but Mute shuts them up. They also shut up DPS Moira. Really nice play there by Mute. That's that's fight winning right there, because if Softlow gets rezzed, it's a different fight. 
But now you're able to force the fight back down mid. You're able to deny forward spawns. Chimps should have enough defense matrix to deny this barrage because you've got to know that's the only ult coming out from the XQC7s. Yeah, and at this point, five seconds remaining here. XQC7s need to get to this spot fast. Looks like it's going to be Shidori making sure they get a touch here. Overtime has commenced. They're down 16 meters, but that's a much... That, they have a very long 16 meters to get to at this moment. They need to win a couple team fights here. Zoro still does have this EMP ready to go. Here it comes. Sopo taking it out early. The EMP comes out, hits all four members of XQC. This could be it. They could try to even up the series here. Fallen out. Shidori get a escape here for the moment. DPS Morgan gonna try to do their best here, but they'll just accept death and the cabaret tie this series right back up. Oh man, I'm, I'm telling you, it's like whoever picks the map just seems to know, they just seem to be picking maps they know how to play so much better, both teams. It's, it's insane the difference in like level of play we're seeing from both teams on their map picks. Like it's such a wide variety, just a wide gap of differences, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like, like I said, for the team that has picked the map has won the map every time now. So if that trend mm -hmm. continues, we're going to be going to a map seven here. But uh, map five is next here. It's going to be back to XQC sevens here to make that pick. And I believe we're going back to a control map, which they did win the yep. first time. Yeah, yeah, and that was their map pick as well. I'm going to predict they're going to try and go Elios here. I feel like Elios has the most wide openness of the uh, of the control maps that are still available unless they just want to get crazy and go antarctic peninsula i mean that would be an interesting pick coming out from them here antarctic peninsula again kind of falls in that same territory as shambali where it's a new map and a lot of teams have started to practice it but it just when it comes down to actual like live serious game played on it that's the big question. That's the big toss of do they have enough experience on it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that map tends to favor the brawl comps more often than not. But we saw Ballin really pop off on that Ramatra. So if they decide they want to just go the Ramatra route instead of the Wrecking Ball route, they're still able to do it very well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I would say Ballin popped off on the Ramatra there that round. He got a couple kills, but in the mm -hmm. end, I think it was just. It was just a swap off just to make sure they can stop getting uh, hacked there by uh, Zoro. Uh, just like what happened on Blizzard World as well. They swapped off yeah. so they would stop getting hacked, but they just swapped yeah. to another easily hackable character. Um, but still, this is going to be a huge map pick here for XQC7s because if they lose this map, their backs are against the wall in this championship series. And it's looking like we do have the map pick and... Uh... The XQC7s are getting a little creative here, and they're picking Antarctic Peninsula. You know, not a shock. I mean, they picked Shambali Monastery, again, one of the newer maps. They won that one handily, in my opinion. Now they're mm -hmm. taking us to Antarctic, the the newest map here, right? Uh, yeah, but yeah. Again, it, it comes down to the same question that I asked or I posed. Like, do does the Cabarets have this serious play experience on this map other than just in scrims? Because it's a much different environment from a serious games to a scrim. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, And I'm curious to see how you play a Wrecking Ball on this map. I haven't seen too too much wrecking ball on this map except from like trick room when i watch some of the overwatch league games i mean they're gonna they're gonna show us their best here because we've seen it every map they've came out mm. on the ball that same comp they started with on Li Zhang tower they've made some slight changes throughout the four maps we've seen so far and the maps where they've had to make changes they've mm. lost so again it just comes down to can the cabarets just force them off the ball because it really seems like once ballin is off that ball the sort of synergy that we see xqc sevens has slowly starts to fall apart yeah yeah most definitely and i really i really want to see is chimps going to come out on this diva again because that was that was what really turned esperanza i felt like as soon as chimps came out on the diva it started denying a lot of that damage from soft flow they were doing a really good job of eating a lot of those rockets yeah and you know they did come out on the winston i i really feel like 
that Cabaret's really expected that we were going to see some different comp out of XQC7s there, but they were smart enough to only stick on that Winston for one life and then go over to that Diva, which, like you said, was the much better option for them. Yeah, usually Winston is pretty solid at controlling space and all that, but against the specific comp the XQC7s are running, you just don't have anybody to go on as Winston, so you kind of have to play the Diva. Yeah, but, you know, as we head in here, what do you necessarily expect to see the Cabarets run? I, like, I expect that we're going to see the XQC7s come out here with the comp they've basically shown us every map. Cabarets, mm -hmm. they've, they've not been afraid to run different comps based on what map they're playing. Yeah, I kind of think... I think the Cabarets are going to stick with exactly what we saw on Esperanza. I think that's exactly what they're going to play. I think I think the Kitsune, the Kitsune and Sound Barrier were such a nice two ultimates for them that I see no reason why they wouldn't swap that support line at all. And then Zoro getting those nice hacks off onto Balin, forcing them off the hero. Mute, of course, if you put mute on any sort of hit scan character, it's gonna be a good good result for you. And then Diva to help out with you know, sort of peeling from mute so they're not getting caught up with these rockets. So I expect the exact same comp we saw on Esperanza. That would be an interesting thing for me because I feel like in a little bit, on some points of Anarch Peninsula, it kind of favors a little bit more Brawl kind of style. And, you know, we haven't necessarily seen Brawl really work out well for either team or really specifically for uh, the Cabarets here. I believe they're really the only one that brought out a Brawl comp. Yeah, we saw the Ramatra for XQC7's last map a little bit, but they, they found some success and some failures with it, so it kind of evened out there. We didn't really see a lot of success with that Brawl comp for the Cabarets when they showed it to us on Li Zhang. Yeah, and that's, and that's mostly just due to the comp the XQC7's are playing. You just, again, you don't have a target to go onto with that Wrecking Ball comp, because you're playing Wrecking Ball, Sombra, Farah. There's nobody to go on. Yeah, but looks like I believe this is the labs map we're heading to here first. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what each team comes out with here to start. Again, I expect XQC7s to be running exactly that. Cabarets, though, coming out with a brawl. Yeah, yeah, very interesting choice as well. You're still sticking on the cast and Sombra. And I suppose the idea here is you're still going to catch out Ballin. And that's who Chimps is going to go at with the swings. That's the only guess I can have, though. It's going to be hard to deny Soflo's damage, though. So I expect Soflo to build a lot of barrages here. Yeah, but if Mute can be a Deadeye as they have been in the past, you know, they can try to shut down Soflo. But with Kleinheld there being their pocket, you know, we've seen them negate a lot of deaths. Really just seeing some poke damage go in. Not too much yet. Look at Sofalo. Already 25% to their ultimate. And But again, a, a common theme we saw through the first couple of maps. Shidori getting a little bit too aggressive on that Sombra. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. But they fall incredibly early. Mer Mute almost getting taken out there. But at this point, the Cabaret's going to have an easy first point take. Yeah, Cabaret's get that nice cap. Mute is just building ult so fast, hitting so many shots, as per usual. Baptiste Lane able to find Ball in there, and that has to force this XQC team to fall back. No tank to disrupt anyone there. There's not a lot you can do. Shidori trying to get in some damage, but they're going to recall themselves to keep themselves alive here. Yeah, and look at Mute and Taiga. Mute and Taiga have ult. I'm expecting another nano boost onto Mute. That was the big play they were making on the last map they tried playing this comp. So, see no reason why they wouldn't do it again. Watch for Softflow's Barrage as well. Barrage ready here for Softflow. XQC7s almost do cap the point here, but they're just looking for any opening they can possibly get. Here comes the Nano. Like you said, it's going to mute. They have this high noon ready. Are they going to pair the two up? They're going to get hacked out. But here comes the Barrage, and it's a good target. They find mute here, but Pepsi's main finds Softflow right back. It's traded right out there on to Jimps. This should be XQC's go button. They have no tank and Softflow back in the picture, and they're able to retake the point. And ooh, DPS Warrior with some help there from Ball and just taking care of Taiga at the end. 
Yeah, yeah, you get 49% though if you're the side of Cabaret, so that's not too bad. And you were able to retain three of your ultimates for this next fight. But XQC7s are going to have four ultimates, and we know how DPS Moira likes to get really aggressive with these coalescences. Chimps swapping off of the Rhine, now going to the Diva, realizing that they need to do more to, to deny soft low here. Uh, but right now, each team just kind of patiently waiting for the other one to engage into the fight. High Noon going to be invested here early by Mute, and it finds Softflow, but I believe they should be able to get them back into this one early. So the, the High Noon doesn't necessarily find anyone there for him. Bobby being popped here by Klein held to get back to the point. Coalescence coming out here from DPS Mora. They're trying to find any kill. Shidori able to find one, but two more members of the Cabarets fall shortly after, and that's going to force a fallback, and XQCs will take the lead. Ooh. Yeah, the res just came in really big there from Kleinheld. Kleinheld has been incredible with these reses. And look at this stagger on the chimps. Oh! But Kleinheld goes down for it. Oh, don't play with your food sometimes. They make them pay there. However, DPS Moira able to get some revenge for their fallen support line, brethren. Yeah, this is going to make Softlow back up, though, to go pick up their mercy. So this could be a little bit of an opening for the Cabarets. Yeah, but they're able to get back there fast. You see everyone there for the Cabarets in that little upper room right there. Shidori does have the EMP ready to go here. And they're trying to get rid of Faptiste, man. They're going to be able just to do that. That's a great pickoff for them. Softlow will be able to find Mute as well. The Barrage ready for them. But Ballin finding Taiga there. That's going to give them a lot of play here, especially since we're in final fight territory. Yeah, a lot of ultimates coming out for the side of XUC7s as well. I think it's going to be up to Baptiste Main to get a nice sound barrier. Beat comes out, but Zoro taken out early. They had the EMP radio, which could have negated the minefields on the point right now. The Cabarets have to keep this fight going. Finds one, Zoro finds ball in here. Cabarets are going to be able to flip this one here. That was a crazy flip. That EMP ended up being huge from Zoro to really solidify this point. And you're getting staggers out, but Shidori kills Zoro. I think it's the first time I've ever seen DPS Mora use the healing orb. Yeah, you know, first time for everything. Chimps <laughs> does manage to retain their mech though, so that's gonna be some nice ult charge for Taiga, assuming that they're able to get there in time. But they might have been asleep at the wheel there as they get hacked. They're gonna be able to keep their mech through the hack though. Now XQC7s have to try to get this point back in their control here. Get the fight happening right now. Baptiste main getting a little bit aggressive on this Baptiste right now. Mute hack. They do have the high noon ready to go right now. We've seen them get some value out of it in the past. Here comes the coalescence from DPS Moira. They're trying to find everyone. Here comes the high noon. They have their eyes set, but they're going to get hacked out of there by Shidori. They will lose their life, but they'll gladly take the, the hack out the hack. Oh, there on the high noon. Solo, solo finds oh. Baptiste main Zoro, though. Comes right back and finds Softlo out. Down goes Kleinfield as well. Now XQC is going to do something incredible here. But the Cabaret's going to be able to come back from essentially what I thought was going to be a loss on oh. this first point to win it. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing why Zoro was swapped in now to play the Sombra. There's just something a little bit different. The coordination between Zoro and Mute, Zoro and Chimps with the hacks and the targets has just been immaculate, quite honestly. The, the hack targets are getting shot at by multiple people and just dying off cooldown. It's been really, really effective. Now we head to, I believe this is Icebreaker here, or the map with the penguins. Right on cue. <laughs> there you go, it's like they knew. <laughs> they could read my mind. <laughs> is this yeah. the yellow map? I like the yellow map. Yeah, this is the yellow map. Okay. This is this is the good one. And we're going to be seeing basically the same comp out from both sides. Yeah, the Cabarets were teasing us with potentially seeing a Roadhog, but they smartly decide to go back to the diva as they found a lot of success with chimps diva so far yeah most definitely been able to deny a lot of damage from softlow all softlow has been able to do with these barrages is just trade with mute basically and you'll take that for an ultimate yeah but right now you see them trying to just get in as much damage as they possibly can here onto anyone they're almost taken out there because they don't have their pocket their pocket though back with them though 
supporting them in this fight. And look at that. Softlo able to find two there off the back of the pile drive from Ballin. Ballin will get their name in the kill feed as Softlo picks up another kill. DPS Moira will eventually fall here. But now it's really up the gyms, and they're just going to get bullied out by the entirety of XQC here. Yeah, and at least they don't get staggered out, so we're able to get a quick, quick reset. Soft low, going to be the closest to ult as per usual. And you just, you really want to see Cabarets push into this and not take too much poke damage if possible. Oh, but Zoro able to get the hack there on to Ball, and they're immediately going to fall right back, though, as essentially everyone in XQC turned on them. Yeah, we're just sitting here at the choke, just kind of poking at each other, soft low, waiting on this barrage. They only need to shoot a couple more rockets and they'll have it available. And there goes the bull for ball and knocking some people for, for Cabarets off that high ground. The hack again coming on onto ball in there. The hack though for the Cabarets going to Baptiste main right there. I see Chimps trying to do whatever they can with that damage mission to make sure no one falls. Barrage Honestly, ready. good work surviving. Barrage, here it comes. It might not be coming here, and actually XQC7s allow the Cabarets to retake the point. Here comes the Barrage, it gets rid of the mech, but Mute immediately deletes two members of XQC7s there. They do let the res come out though, that could be big. Oh, never mind, Baptiste Main's <laughs> making sure it's not going to be big. Baptiste Main showing why the Baptiste is just a DPS in disguise right there, finds both supports there for XQC7s. And we're gonna have a lot of ults on the board here. And Zoro sitting right here, just watching Ballin. Giving a lot of intel on where they're going. Ballin tries to roll through everyone, but gets hacked out. But DPS Mora using their calls to support it. But they're gonna get EMP'd Ooh. out of there by Zoro. A nice EMP to counter that Colas there from DPS Mora. Chimps able to find Ballin. Everything's starting to turn the Cabaret's way here. Yeah, honestly, and like I said again, that's just another really smart play from Zoro. Because not only are you denying the Coalescence, you're doing a lot of damage to all the characters that are going to be within range of that Coalescence as well. So just really smart play from Zoro. Fallen coming right back through, trying to get the trying to get the attention off of the pharmacy in the sky right now. Mute does have their, their Deadeye ready to go. Bomb also ready for chimps here. Here comes the Deadeye from Mute. Gonna try to find anyone. Softlo has to be very careful with where they're poking their head. Not gonna be able to find anyone there, but look at that. Zoro able to find Ballin with some help there from the Diva and the Mercy. And XQC7's running out of time here. This might be final fight territory. It, it sure is looking to be that way. And Taiga is about to have the uh, Valkyrie, which is going to be really nice sustain. You got to watch for soft low on this barrage again, though. They almost have it. Ballin used their minefields at some point here, so no ultimates on the board right now for XQC 7s here. And this is a big point here for them. Overtime commenced here. Cabaret just need to close this one out, and they go on to series point zero. Able to find Ballin out early again. Bomb coming out on point, doesn't find anyone there, but the barrage from Softlo does find one, but the kills continue to go the way of the Cabarets here. Tiger able to get viewed back in this one. The EMP comes out there from Zoro, and that will do it on the Anarch Peninsula. Mm -hmm. The Cabarets one map win away from being crowned your grand finals champions. Yeah, big, big map win. This is the first, this is the first team that has won a map that wasn't their pick, the away team winning, if you will, <laughs> to use a basketball term. Uh, the away team finally won a game, and we're going to series point here. The big thing that I noticed all throughout this map was that instead of soft low getting these big barrages that they've been getting all game, Mute was able to make it a one-for-one -one trade every time they barraged, basically, just with their shots, and then they were able to get res by Taiga, so it kind of just negated what happened. Yeah, and honestly, the biggest play that we saw there from soft low that map that came off a of barrage was when... Uh, Chimps was running that Reinhardt, and they weren't able to eat up a lot of the damage. Swapping over to that D.Va again really, really helped out the Cabarets there. And now they're one map away from winning it all here. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to be going to a hybrid map, I do believe, next. Or is it going to be an escort? I always forget how the last two go. Hybrid. It is a hybrid. Okay. So it looks like we're going to be going to a hybrid map, and... You know, I'm going to say King's Row because is it really a series if we don't have King's Row somewhere in it? 
I mean, that's up to XQC sevens here. Uh, <laughs> that that's up to them right now if they want to truly be a series. But they have to pick a map they're a hundred percent confident with here. Their backs are against the wall. They can't lose again. They're one map loss away from their season being over and being and finishing second place. And just, yeah. I don't know if you noticed it while we were looking at the brackets here. Did you notice that all the XQC7 series went the distance? Yeah, yeah, I did notice that, including their match against this same team in round one. It went five maps. So we could be seeing a seven mapper here, you know? uh hey really really curious to see what, what, what map six is going to be though yeah it, it's it, it's such a key map pick here for them you already you already talked about the you already talked about potentially going to king's row and yeah king's row is a great map for the pharmacy ball on the other hand may be good on the first point second point kind of up in the air in my opinion and i think it's back to being sort of good on the third point as well mm -hmm. but again it really all comes down to in your opinion what is the best ball map or in their opinion was the best ball hybrid map because they're not going to play anything yeah. else in my opinion other than the ball comp. yeah 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 absolutely i think of the hybrid maps the best one's probably like midtown or something hmm. but i'm having a hard time thinking of all the hybrid maps honestly but you have to think maybe, about all the hybrid maybe hollywood maps in the map pool maybe hollywood potentially that's a good dive map i could see it being could a good ball that. map as well but again it, it like they need to be a hundred percent confident here their backs are now against the walls while yeah. in my opinion uh, the cabarets here their their confidence and momentum are as high as they've been so far this series winning two in a row here have been crucial for them and hey shadow guess what it's a real series we're going to king's row I mean, yeah, you got to love to see it. <laughs> King's Row, everyone's favorite map. It still is the best map in the game, at least in my opinion. <laughs> it's the best map in the game. It's been the it's been the game the longest amount here. But again, it's a map that everyone knows in and out here. So yeah, mm -hmm. XQC is picking it because they feel like they can win on it. I bet you in the same scenario here, if XQC7 had won this last map, my feeling is... The Cabarets would have been picking this exact same map as well. Yeah. It just it plays so well into almost anything that you want to play, and everyone's played it enough, in my opinion, or basically a lot, that they feel absolutely confident that they can win on it. Yeah, yeah. And is this where is this where the XQC sevens change their comp up? Hmm. Is this where it happens? Do they do it on King's Row and they just kind of you know, full send it into this Ramatra. We haven't seen Softlo play anything other than Fara so far, so they could be really good at other heroes as well. I think Softlo did play something else. Very, sh they played the Tor defense on uh, ah, right. Blizzard, Blizzard World, but again, I don't think they got a lot of value out of the Tor. I believe their turrets were pretty much killed seconds after they were set up. So mm -hmm. again, this it, XQC7 seemed like a team that. They know how to play one comp, and they know how to play it really good. And if you get them mm -hmm. off that comp, they kind of stuck the struggle. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be surprised to see anything besides the ball comp here, like you said. But, you know, they could, they could surprise us. They could come out and surprise us. For the side of Cabarets, though, are they going to walk out on this Rhine comp again? Or are they just going to you know, submit to the idea that the XQC sevens are going to keep playing this ball comp. So let's walk out on the diva. I mean, I feel like that's the smartest thing for them to do. The diva, especially with chimps being their uh, tank has been the thing that has really shut them, shut down uh, that pharmacy and the ball, in my opinion, because it allows Zoro to do a lot more on the Sombra here. But, you know, we're going to see here what, each team comes out with like i said the last couple of maps i expect xqc sevens to come out here on a ball cabarets they might come out with a brawl comp in my opinion Ready for battle. all right so yeah xqc sevens doing exactly what we expected them to do and cabarets probably doing a little trolling right now while they're sitting in spawn if they come out on the doomfist though i'm not opposed to seeing it you know i always like watching zebra punch faras out of the air <sighs> 
I, I, I just have this feeling that they're teasing us. At least Chimps is. Zoro, I, I think, is teasing us as well here at the moment. Um, they might try to get one pop shot off and then swap over. But yeah, Chimps decide to end the playing around a little bit early there. Goes over to the D.Va. And yeah, this is pretty much to be expected. Zoro swapping to the Sombra. Mute getting the pocket on this far or on this uh, Ash should be really powerful. Yeah, and oh, this yeah, it's gonna be absolutely scary as Mute. We've documented it throughout this entire series. I, I have to imagine they've hit over 50% of their shots every game so far. So this damage boosted Ash is just gonna be very, very scary here. However, the hack coming out here on the Taiga won't really do a lot as I believe Shidori immediately recalled themselves back. Nice shot. And here we go. Oh, the res! It's gonna come out, but just a little bit too late there. And this is a horrible start here for the XQC7s. Yeah, just a really nice push forward by Mute to just deny that res from XUC7s. As soon as that res gets denied, that's that's kind of fight. That's kind of the end of the fight. Yeah, ball and fall in there late too. Won't get that forward spawn, so we're not necessarily going to see a potential arches hold right here from the XUC7s. They're going to have to fall back and wait for their wrecking ball to come back. And Mute again just keeps on finding these headshots. Yeah, this is what it looks like when Mute gets a pocket, because remember, they didn't have a pocket on Antarctic Peninsula with all those shots they were hitting. It, it looks crazy. We haven't seen this since Blizzard World, I don't believe. No, not at all. And remember, we have to stress this a lot here. And this could be the final map of the series here. The Cabarets here, looking strong right now. XQC7s need to try to find a kill here just to get them going. Yeah, and look at the ult advantage we're going to have here. Softlow needs to get a nice barrage to try and stop the Caparets from pushing in with their ultimates. Oh, but Baptiste Fa Main with some help there from Mute. Able to take out Shidori early. Another theme that we've seen so much throughout this series. Shidori just falling really before any team fight starts. The Valkyrie, the Bob already coming out here from the Caparets. I believe Bob just went to the subway, so he's met, he might be late for his train. Tiger though, doing a lot here to support the all of their team right now, Zoro able to find DPS Moira there. Soflo falls as well. And down goes Kleinheld again. Like I said, this is just a horrible start right now for the XQC7s. Yeah, the Cabarets have just been steadily snowballing this fight over and over and over again. And the Cabarets still have three ultimates here. If Zoro can get the CMP, it'd be pretty big. The bomb coming out there, definitely a remake bomb coming out from Chimps, but again, Five minutes, 20 seconds in the time bank right now. A very, very healthy time bank. The XQC7s need to try to eat as much of the clock as they possibly can. And we finally see the first kill onto a member of the Cabarets this round. Soflo getting off of the, the bar going over to the Cassidy. Yeah, probably a smart swap. You're gonna need to change up a lot if you're the XQC7s to really just stop this push coming through from the Cabarets. Shidori with the EMP. Minefield and the EMP coming out. A trade going each way. Shidori for Taiga. As Mute is up on this high ground right now. And they're going to be taken out there by DPS more with some help there from Ballin. XQC7 finally winning a team fight here this round. And DPS Moira doing their namesake here. Being very aggressive. Trying to get rid of Chimps here. But they're going to have to get out of here before they get taken out. Greetings. Yeah, and Chimps doing the swap back and forth to get the suit back. But Cabarets have four ultimates walking into just a Deadeye and a Coalescence from DPS Moira. This could be a nice fight win for Cabarets if they play it, right? Zoro looking for the EMP and Mute able to find Kleinfeld out early. The Valkyrie being popped here by Taiga to start off this fight here for the Cabarets. The hack trying to come out there on the ball, not going to be able to find them there. They're still holding on to this EMP. The Cabarets do have a couple ultimates here that could potentially end this round for them with a very healthy time bank mute chimps already finding two here it's starting to look bad here for xqc sevens but we do see shidori get rezzed back up here however they need to try to get to the cart right now damage is coming out here from here mute finds one high noon coming out does not find anyone just yet and they won't find anyone here point uh, half a meter away right now ball and try and do their best but it won't be enough and the cabarets over three and a half minutes in their time bank here 
Yeah, the Cabarets have figured out this ball comp so well. This just exactly what they've run out with. You could swap the Ash for a Cass, you know, or a Soldier, or just any sort of hit scan, I believe, and it'll work the exact same way. But basically, you want to pocket a hit scan, hack the ball off cooldown, and then you have Faptiste main to also pressure out with a lot of damage as well. And you know, this was this was a big question that I I said coming in this one. Did XQC7s believe that their ball comp could win them this map here? Defensively, it looked like no, it, it couldn't. Offensively, they need to absolutely surprise us, but they're not coming out with the ball comp. They're coming out with a traditional brawl. Oh, okay, okay. So let's let's see how the XQC7s play on these different heroes, because I don't think we've seen them really swap their heroes much at all ball and i saw do pretty well on the ramatra on esperanza but i don't think we've seen shidori or Softlo play these heroes same with kleinhild and dps moira yeah but this this round for the xqc sevens is so big for them they need to just try to complete the map that's all they really need to try to do here mm -hmm. you're the cabarets you end it you deny them from completing the map your grand finals champions here. Mm -hmm. And now XQC7's coming out with this Ramatra comp. You know, I, I imagine it's going to catch the Cabarets off guard here a little bit. Yeah, definitely. You know, they're not ready for it because they haven't seen this yet. They already get one tick here on point before Chimps decides to go down there, but they're immediately DMX before that Immortality Field able to keep them up. Now you just see Ball and throwing punches, but Mute just again finding kill after kill here early. Yeah, Mute is just kind of popping off with this Ash. It is insane. Chimps has swapped onto the Reinhardt, though. It won't necessarily matter for them now, but Ball and Falling there it might help them actually try to hold it. Arches and Mute just deny Softlow there. Just, just gross play from Mute, quite honestly. Like, my goodness, these shots are crazy. Look at this. Oh. They're gonna fall that Rom Shield was needed. They're going to fall back, but at the moment right now, they're going to be able to hold arches, which is very, very good for them. But XQC7 just need to try to win a, this team fight here very, very fast. Ice wall coming out there will deny champs from getting back, and the Immortality Field will not save him either. No Ryan right now for the Cabarets. The XQC7s need to go on the Shidori. Now finding a lot of value with their own cast here. Finds Zoro. Chimps are able to get Rez back in this one here. Fallen starting to throw some punches. Trying to find anyone in the charge coming out there. Will not find anyone. The Immortality Field being invested here by XQC7s as well as the beat. Here comes the damage metrics from the Cabarets. And Chimps able to find two with the Fire Strike. Now they're charging in looking for more. They're swinging, but they're going to force everyone on the XQC7s to fall back. Yeah, the old Fire Strike window combo. You love to see it when it actually gets somebody. It's one of the best feelings in the world when you throw that, when you throw the Fire Strike as a Reinhardt and get those multiple kills. And Chimps, Chimps and Zoro, nice kill on the mute. But they're going to get Rez back into this one here. DPS Moira now on the Baptiste, trying to, again, show why they can, why Baptiste is just a DPS player in disguise. Shatter coming out, finds three here, ball and is hacked they will not Ooh. find anything with that annihilation other than Baptiste main there but again it's another good team fight win here for the cabarets big big shatter from chimps lines up the two squishies right in a row so he can throw two fire strikes and get those kills out early and the xqc7s are swapping their comp up now looks like ball and going back to the ball we're looking at a ball with a reaper and a may this they need to find value out of this fast. Mute immediately shuts down DPS Moira. But like I said, they need to try to find value out of this fast because these picks right here are seeming like desperation comfort picks at the moment. Bob coming out here from Mute. Mute's gonna shut down Softlow before they even touch back down to the earth there. And again, it's another team fight win here for the Cabarets. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it, cost, it did cost you your Valkyrie and your Bob. But the side of the XQC7s only have a Baptiste window to try and walk into this with, so it, it's not not too bad for you, quite honestly. Um, I do want to see what DPS Moira is going to do with this window, though. 
Oh, and Mute already able to find Sofa there. The Reds are going to come out to get them back in this one. Ballin, though, at half health needs to get some support here. Ballin, though, immediately to fall there. Here comes the damage matrix from the XQC7. She's going to force the Cabarets to fall back here, but they're just going to wait for that damage matrix to go away and then re-engage them. Yeah, and Baptiste Main is going to have a damage matrix of their own. Can Chimps get another double fire strike kill through it? <laughs> He's looking, they're looking for three this time around, but now the XQC is finally get back to push this car a little bit. That damage matrix is maybe a little bit further ahead than look what they wanted to be there. This will allow the XQC 7 here to maybe try to get, punish them for it right now. Sofla here trying to get a lot of damage in the air there. Ballin able to find Zoro there, a nice pick for them. They do have minefields ready. Yeah, yeah, Soflo has barrage as well. Are they gonna be able to pop at this fight or are they gonna... Those Zoro swaps to that Sombra pick again, probably to try and stop Ball and from getting so much value on this Wrecking Ball. Here comes Bob from Mute here. Oh, it almost takes care of Soflo there, but it will force the XQCs here to fall back a little bit. Now Soflo gonna go very aggressive, but they're gonna be denied by the Bob there. Nothing coming from that barrage. Yeah, sixth man of the year, Bob, coming in with some really nice plays for the side of uh for the side of the cabarets. And Chimps has this shatter, but with the comp that's being played, nice kill by Faptiste, man. Again, that's just gonna force XQC7 to fall back. They cannot engage into a fight without both their supports. Yep, yep. And we're seeing DPS Moira go back to their namesake. So probably just some more comfort picks for the side of the XQC7s, I imagine. A minute. 15 left for them here to get to the second point. Ballin does have the minefields ready, but they won't be able to use them this time around as they're hacked, as they're flying through the sky there. But they're gonna be able to try to get them off this time. They're gonna pop them there. They're gonna pile drive there onto the Mercy, but their Mercy's gonna pop their own ultimate there to keep themselves alive. Mute though will fall here. For, uh, Death Blossom ready for Shidori right now, but they might just try to hold on to it for potentially what could be a fight winning or a point winning fight. Yeah, absolutely. You really want to see Shidori getting set up for their Death Blossom right now for the side of the XQC 7s. Chimps does have this Shatter available as well. Who are they going to go for? I mean, they might be looking for anyone they can here soon. 30 seconds on the clock. It's coming out. It hits That's the two one. there. That's huge. That's the one. DPS and Shidori both out. That's gonna. That has to force XQC to fall back here. They cannot lose anyone else. That's such a smart play from Chimps. You have to know that Shidori has that Death Blossom, so catching them out before they get the chance to use it. Oh, now they're going to have to use it in desperation instead of, like, actually being prepared to use it. And Zoro has EMP for when the XUC7s have to touch point. Valkyrie being popped here by Klein held early. They need, they get the point touch here. Shidori coming in, but Zora does have this EMP ready to go here. They can pop it off whenever EMP comes out. It does hit Shidori, but they're able to Wraith form Alvin Ballin already out. Here comes the Death Blossom. and it needs to be huge. It doesn't find anyone other than Immortality Fields. But look at that, they're able to get a couple kills here. DPS Moria picks up one, Shidori picks up one, as well Zoro though does find Sofla. But Shidori just carrying their team right now. Bob though on the point might stop them here from capping it, but he eventually flies away. And XQC7s keep themselves alive. Uh, Shidori did a really good job of not dying when they used that Death Blossom because the Death Blossom didn't necessarily get the kills, but the Death Blossom was the reason they were able to secure the kills because you forced all the resources out with the Death Blossom. you able to find DPS Moira right there back on this high ground. A very scary place for them to be. Oh. The Raz going to get... Sofalo back into this one here. Zoro able to find Shidori there as Shidori has now swapped back over to the Sombra. Ballin though going to the Diva now. Yeah. They're gonna get hacked out of their mech here and Mute immediately shuts them down. Mute, just just a sick individual on this Ash right now. Like, oh my goodness, these shots are crazy. 30 seconds right now for the XQC 7s. Essentially, Final fight territory if they're gonna try to play this slow, but the Cabarets do have almost all five ultimates ready here. It's gonna be absolutely crazy here for the XQC sevens here if they want to try to have anything go the way. Valkyrie's being popped by both Mercy to start out though. Utter pandemonium. That's what this fight's about to be. 
10 seconds left to go here. XQC 7s need to try to push this card all the way to make sure they go to an overtime. Salt Pillow able to find Zoro. That's a huge pick as there will be no EMP ready for them in this fight. Overtime has commenced here right now. And you see the dive there on to mute. They're getting... They're going to be able to get them off the high ground. However, still four ultimates ready for the cabaret. Here comes Bob on the card. It immediately finds Shintori. A huge pick because they had EMP radio. Here comes the bomb from Fallen. It only finds Zoro. But Mute finds Soulflow there with the bomb. Now here comes the bomb from Chimps. They're looking to end it now. Not going to be able to find anyone. Not going to be able to find anyone with that crush kill as well. It's really just Fallen and Klein held there. DPS Mora going over to the Ana, trying to keep us alive here. Mute gonna be able to take care of them. XQC7's trying to get more people back to this cart right now, but Klein held getting bullied here or harassed by Champs. They're eventually be taken out there by Faptiste Main. Here comes the EMP from Zoro. It finds all three live members of the XQC7. Ballin, last one alive here. Actually, no, it's Softlow who, tra who, tra who goes over to the Tracer, but that will do it. The Cabarets are your season 11 uh, Diamond EU console champions. Well deserved as well for the side of Cabarets. It took them a few maps to figure it out, but they were able to figure out how to deal with the XQC7's ball comp. And for that, beautiful shatter here from Chimps also. That was such a big play. And it really, you know, when Chimps and Zoro came in and we saw them basically kind of running the exact same players that, you know, who they were coming for were running. You know, I, I think that kind of left me and you kind of confused on why they are bringing them in. But in the end, mm -hmm. I feel like Chimps and Zoro were the difference here. Yeah, yeah, there was just like a slight increase in synergy, and I think that's what really uh, that's what really propelled Cabarets to get the to get the W here today. Yeah, and I mean you have to give XQC Sounds a lot of credit. They looked very good throughout their throughout those first four maps, but in my opinion, that fourth map right there where or Cabarets won on Esperanza. I feel like they really figured out how to shut down the ball comp. And then after that, they, the XQC 7s really were never able to get anything going again. Yeah, yeah, the XQC 7s really strong on that ball comp. They just couldn't quite run any other comps. And once Cabarets figured it out, that was it. That was it. They were able to just win the series out from there, like you said. Cabarets also getting a little bit of revenge here. Remember, at the start of the playoffs, these two teams played each other in the first round. XQC 7s knocked them down to that losers bracket in five maps. Cabarets, we're not gonna, we're not gonna allow uh, uh, the XQC 7s to take us to another final map winner takes all scenario. They ended it here in six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Kudos to both teams for a well played series and well played season. And uh, yeah, w uh, would you like to say? player of the match here because I would say Mute personally because they were just consistent coming off of their shots. Yeah, I would say Mute as well, but I feel like you also have to give Chimps a, a, a big a, a big credit as well with them being able to come in and really help out so much uh, with just the team comp there and be able to eat a, a lot of damage on that diva. However, we're going to take a little bit of a short break here and we'll be right back with an interview from one of the members of uh, the Cabarets.
Right, welcome back everyone we have tank player chimps from the champion cabarets here chimps congratulations on winning the championship man how do you feel i feel <laughs> great um uh well back to back champion i won last season as well so i feel pretty happy um but i'm also just happy and overwhelmed for my team they deserved this so much, and I'm glad that we could just get through it and win it. Yeah, it was an awesome game and performance, and the game really seemed to flip on its head once you and Zoro got swapped in there for Esperanza. What was the reasoning behind the two of you coming in? Because it seemed like you came in to play the same heroes, from what uh, I noticed. Um, to be honest, that wasn't much... Uh, difference in well, wasn't much reasoning behind it um, besides communication. Um, Verted, who was previously playing for Zoro, um, he's not a very vocal person. Um, in fact, he most of the season he spent on mute, um, not actually speaking. So we just need, I think we just needed some more vocal people in the chat. Um, and then me coming with Professor was more so I think. It was just a move that I decided to make halfway through. It wasn't so much of him playing bad or one thing or the other. It was just one of those things where I thought it would be best to bring me in, shift it up, um, see if it does anything with the comm structure and things like that. And turns out it did. And we ended up just pulling through. Yeah, yeah, definitely sometimes helps to get that energy change. And, uh, Dex, did you have a question? Yeah, so it seemed like throughout this entire series, and I imagine you guys pretty much already knew this, but the XQC7s were basically always running that ball comp there. And the couple times that we saw that you guys were able to force them off of it, it they really started to go downhill from there. Was that always part of your guys' game plan, was just to try to get them off the ball comp, off the, onto something that you were a little bit more uncomfortable with? <laughs> uh, yes. Um... They are very just. They're all just one tricks. Their entire team is just one tricks. They in a night. I don't want to trash talk them, but they're not good. Um, they know that one composition, and that's the only composition they know. And because we previously played them and we three owed them um, when they were not on this composition, and then we played them again, and it was a three two, and they were only playing this, and so basically just we knew they were exactly what they were going to come out on which is why you saw the composition we ran today. And our goal was just bully them off of it because we know we just win um, when we do. And, and it proved to work. Yeah, it seemed like every map you guys were able to do that. You guys pretty much handily won it. Uh, Shadow, any more questions? Uh, yeah, I would say... How'd you feel about the season like overall? Was it a roller coaster ride back and forth? Was it pretty much up the whole time? What what would you say? Um to be honest, our season was basically just we won every game pretty much. Um until near the end of the season. I think we just had like a really good honeymoon phase of just winning. Then we slowly had a divot towards the end just before playoffs. Um, which I think we really needed. It was like a a smack on the head saying you need to tone yourself back um you're not as good as you think you are um so then we just kind of went to the drawing book worked out our weaknesses against comps like this because a lot of people were going into the ball comps um and then since then we've just made like the entire lower bracket ours <laughs> so yeah it's been pretty good Shadow, do you have any other questions you would like to ask? Uh, no, no. I would just say congratulations to you, chimps. And if you want to shout out anybody, feel free to right now. Um, I just want to shout out my entire team. They were just wonderful throughout. Um, it's a shame we couldn't get everyone in for playtime during this. I would have loved to have everyone playing. And it's a shame I know some people couldn't make it today. So we want it for them. Um... And then just our staff as well. 
Bethy and Kiri, they're, they're two wonderful people as well. We basically were just there throughout the entire thing. So just all of all of Kaba as an organization, they were wonderful. And a special shout out to Mute. Mute. If, if there were MVPs given out, Mute deserves MVP after the performance he was putting on. He did so much today, and I'm very proud of him. Me, both me and Shadow Fang shouted out Mute a lot throughout the series and also <laughs> did say he was probably our player of the game from this series as well. So your shout outs yeah. are very much well deserved for Mute and the rest of your team and staff there. Chimps, congratulations on the season. Congratulations on being the grand champions here. I hope you have a great night and thank you for your time, man. Thank you. I hope you guys have a wonderful night as well. Thank you. All right, that was Chimps, again, the tank player there for the Cabarets, the champions of the Diamond console tier in the EU here. Again, this was a great series, Shadow Fang. Let's just yeah. not disregard that. XQC7s came out here, uh, and really, honestly, they made that ball comp go as far as it could, but like we heard from Chimps there, they knew what they had to do to shut it down. Yeah, yeah, and once they figured out what they had to do to shut it down, it, it just looked like a completely different series. It went from XQC7s dominating at the beginning to Cabarets dominating at the end. Yeah, absolutely right there. Uh, Shadow, is there anyone you want to shout out here before we sign off for the night? Uh, no, no, just uh, love, love the production. <laughs> love the production cast as always. Great job to everybody involved. And uh, yeah, that's looking like it's looking like we had uh, we had Joey and Zeuser on the on the POV today, as well as Hippie, of course. And uh, Dex, you as well did a great job. Yeah, we also had Little Joe, and I believe that is uh, Kanzime as well. I'm probably pronouncing that name absolutely wrong. Kazix may jump. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, pronounce it horribly, but you know, like you said, everyone behind the scenes did great tonight, making sure that everyone who watched, thank you to everyone who came out to watch this incredible series, was able to see what they saw here tonight. Shadow Fang, I thank you like you thanked me. You were great to cast with as always, but that will do it for us here tonight. The Cabarets are your season 11 EU Diamond Tier Console Grand Champions here. Thank you everyone for coming back out and make sure you guys follow us here at CGL to make sure you are informed when other grand finals are happening. I hope you all have a great night and thank you.